right. I think we're live. Hopefully you can hear us if you're in the chat channel. Thanks for joining us. This is Adventures in Lollygagging, the Gen Lab Alpha Edition. Uh, this is our third session. Uh, last week we had some fun times. Uh, before we get into that, uh, quick promotional crap. Uh, Adventures in Lollygagging, we do a podcast. comes out every Monday. We do a podcast versus Vihander RPG. Uh, you can catch us wherever you find podcasts. And on Wednesdays, you can usually catch the Lollygaggers podcast. It's another thing I do. Another one of our friends where we just talk nonsense geek stuff for a while. Uh, Ashley, Long, and Melissa, they play along in the Mutant Year, or excuse me, in the uh, Zweihander campaign. Uh, so you can kind of hear them as well. Uh, I think we are ready. Have you guys seen the new logo? We got our new logo, our fancy logo. Looks really good. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Do uh, do we sound okay? Um, everybody say something at least. Hello. Yeah. Say something at least. There we go. <laughs> if you're typing in the Zoom, Zoom chat, uh, I wouldn't recommend it because it's going to interfere with uh, some screenage. Because remember, I'm capping that so we can see. Oh, it. yeah. Yeah, no, it sounds pretty good overall. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's do a quick recap of the past two weeks. First session, session zero, we just basically made characters, good times. Uh, second sesh, uh, we actually started doing some things. Uh, so what do we remember from uh, from last week? So uh, Hamill's brother was captured, mm -hmm. which prompted the beginning of events with Cujo and Hamill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're both uh, they're both members of the Badger tribe. So in the Badger habitat during the Wild Dance, a uh, a feral holiday, uh, the the Watchers, the robotic oppressors of these animal mutants in the valley, uh, kind of came and abducted Hamilton, Hamill's uh, Hamill's annoyingly named brother, uh, and uh, he was taken off the show uh, because I didn't want to get that name confused over and over again. <laughs> And then uh, you're welcome. And what happened over at the cat habitat, Ashley? Do you remember? Uh, cat habitat. We captured um some rats, and um, yeah. pretty much we're gonna eat them. And then I met this really cool gecko guy. Uh, that is that is correct. Yeah, all that's correct. I think. Yep. And I got distracted because I was listening to your audio. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> and... no, you're, you're, doing, you're doing all I asked. It's all good. Yeah, we had an audio like, problem last week. but yeah. I feel like you're a bit quiet on Twitch compared yeah. to everyone else. Me, Yeah, it's because I got myself turned down a little bit because I got a, like a buzz problem. I'll turn myself up a little bit, but I don't want to go up too much because I don't want to hear the buzz. Uh, so in 20 seconds, let me know how that sounds, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so other things that happen at the cat tribe. So yeah, you're right. You found... Your sister is the is the leader. There were a couple rats that were found to have wandered into the cat territory, and uh, yeah, they were they were executed. And you guys heard from uh, Ringo there as well, as Ringo keeps popping up from time to time. You also met Tchaikovsky, another lizard, uh, and Ringo is kind of going around recruiting. Yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah. Chameleon. Well, that's a type of lizard. It's a gener <laughs> general term for lizard. Uh, so, yeah, Ringo was going around recruiting people to the resistance, or more specifically, because you all are probably members of, or at least have participated in some sort of resistance elements in the past. Like, this is more like inner circle special forces type of thing. Um, and so all of you, one by one, were recruited uh, to, to join Ringo on a small uh, excursion over to a downed helicopter near the badger in dog tribes. Uh, and that's where you guys were attacked by a land shark. Uh, Hamill was bit terribly and, uh, and yep. nearly was paralyzed for life, if not for Helena's uh, quick healing abilities. Indeed. Thank you very much, Helena. That's much appreciated. <laughs> I would have been like, hey, you want to join the resistance? You know, just kidding. I don't know if we want you anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean, like your brother got taken, and now you're like, you know, you're it's, a rough, it's a rough couple of days. Rough couple. Drag of around days. in my wagon. Yeah, yeah, you and your little Just wagon. The moral support. Yeah. So I gotta crop these uh, these Zoom windows a little better. I can see when you guys light up to talk. Sometimes, whatever, it's no big deal. Um, so eventually, though, you got to meet the head of the resistance, True Foe. What do you remember about True Foe? 
other than his it's name. Ginormous. Yeah, he's a yeah. he's a bear. massive bear, like twelve feet tall or something like that. Yeah. He's an elder and he's the one who sent Ringo. Yeah. Yeah. He is he uses various people to for different things. Ringo is like one of his assets who go around and recruit for him. Uh he even he's had a little rec- wild paw. Yeah. And uh yeah. his niece named Wildpaw. Wild yeah. So you all were recruited to be a kind of multi-habitat uh, group of animals to go about and um, you know, kind of do things across the valley uh, that individual groups couldn't necessarily do. Because most of the times these cells, these resistant cells, work within their own habitat. And he was looking for a more specialized party uh, that can do like cross-habitat stuff. And that's what you all were recruited to do. And your first task as we're going to dive in now, uh, is to recover a machine-killing weapon, is how he described it. Uh, Specifically, it was referred to as an EMP rifle. Uh, Do you all remember where that uh, that was found? At the lodge. Dog tribe? Yeah, dog tribe. So the dogs are right next to the badgers and pretty close to the the helicopter as well. We Don't forget we have that map on our main Roll20 page. Uh, But it's... uh, the dogs are like the right hand sort of of the watchers. They're like the they're the watchers' best friends. They get all the choice foods and artifacts and stuff from them, and they're treated the best. And they're as close to complicit or collaborators as you can get. Uh, some are outright collaborators, and others are just far more sympathetic towards the watchers. Uh, but you need to somehow recover this uh, machine killing weapon, which is going to be crucial to the resistance's efforts because up until now, like trying to use your claws and your fangs and your teeth to bite into the metal chassis of these, uh, of these drones and these sentinels is, is ineffective. So unless there's any questions, let's get started. Uh, morning comes uh it uh it was a rough night for hamill couldn't find a particularly good way to to get comfortable within or outside of the helicopter uh, there were a handful of hammocks and other bed rolls and weird combinations of different uh of different somewhat cushy material for people to sleep on that had been set up by wild paul and by Truffaut for you all to stay in uh Truffaut disappeared into the night uh but returns in the morning uh, and you also notice that wild paul is doing the same this isn't anything to be worried about it's just bears are relatively lonesome creatures and like to spend time doing their own little walkabouts uh without uh you know without too many people kind of in their way uh, so all of you wake up in the morning you can go ahead and mark off rations of water and food uh Hamill, at this point, you've had enough healing time to recuperate from the partial paralysis, so you no longer are suffering that effect. Uh, And unless somebody is doing something uh, specific, uh, as you all start to wake up, eventually Truffaut and Wildpaw and Ringo will beckon you all back into the helicopter, into the planning room where they have that kind of giant wagon wheel coffee table repurposed with like a glass top uh, to do some planning for your uh, for your upcoming mission so to refresh your memory your job is to again so Truffaut uh, is looking around at you all seeing Hamill back on our feet and you all need to recover the machine killing weapon. I can't do it myself. If I were to make an appearance in such a public location, the watchers would be on me quicker than you can imagine. So I leave it to you. Consider this a test. Should you pass it, not only will you help The resistance achieve its ultimate ends, but you will also gain my great confidence. I leave you to decide your methods for approach. And he uh, he motions to Wildpaw, 
who unfurls this uh, this poster. And on one side, it's like a like a movie poster. And on the other side, it's just sort of blank. And she takes out like pieces of charcoal and she unfurls it on top of this on top of this table and sets up two big rocks on either side to keep it from rolling back up. And she hands the charcoal piece over uh, to little old McCloud with his goofy hat. And Truffaut says, could you sketch out a basic layout of the lodge for us? Fox. I hold out the piece of paper and the pencil, and then I close my eyes and do my best drawing of it. Okay. Uh, and you have a, I mean, you, you, you live there, so it's not mm-hmm. like you have no trouble. I mean, maybe you don't know every little ins and outs, uh, but the things that you would know, uh, you know that there is a multi-story building uh, that's specifically the lodge uh, within which most of the dogs live. It's very hierarchical. Uh, and so the dogs usually take the building. Uh, O'Donnell, the, the elder, uh, the leader of that tribe, is specifically in the t- uppermost floor and usually stays there, doesn't really wander a bunch and is heavily guarded. Uh, you know that the dogs, most dogs live in that building and the first floor has a bar and the ba- basement has like a jacuzzi and people usually like pretty much any animal, like any of the dog animals, the dog tribe animals are allowed into the, the, the basement or the first floor, but getting into the second and the third and fourth, that's usually just dog territory. Uh, you know that most of the foxes and wolves live in various, um, uh, various rundown, uh, and recovered, uh, cars and trucks and caravans and cargo crates and stuff that are out in front uh, of the lodge itself, right next to the market where a lot of different animals across the entire valley come to trade. The dogs get the greatest artifacts. And so they usually tend to to dictate the economy. Uh, and you live most likely somewhere within one of those. Uh, and although there are certainly people who live outside of the fences, the gates, most of them live within. Uh, you know that uh, the the scrap leader, the scavenger who uh, who actually has the 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 EMP rifle is is the name of uh, Gagarin Eleven, and he uh, he lives in a his own scrap area. He's a like a Boston Terrier, part of this Boston Terrier pack. They're all mostly scavengers and neurotic and very paranoid and suspicious and super cocky and arrogant. Uh, but at the same time, he is a very good scavenger and has great control of artifacts. And so one of his privileges is that he gets his own little cabin on the west side. Uh, and so you're kind of sketching this out and explaining a lot of these basic things. There's really just one way in or out, uh, at least one legitimate way in or out to the whole compound. Uh, and that's through like a southern a southern gated entrance, which has watchtowers that are guarded 24 hours every day. Um Fewer, fewer guards are around at night than there are during the day, as you would imagine. Uh, but it's always guarded. There's always people patrolling around all the gates. Um, it's not impossible. I mean, like you guys could make it. You you know that there's plenty of plenty of non dog tribe members make it into the market uh, in within the gates. But usually, it's because they have something to trade. Uh, they're sca- scavengers. Like you would know this. Tchaikovsky and Ringo would probably chime in. Like is you, you two get in would probably get in no problem so long as you show them your wagon filled of scrap and artifacts and stuff like that. But, um, and the rest, but the rest of you might have a little bit more trouble. Uh, so you sketch this out and specifically where the, the, the rifle would be, you don't know, but you just know that Gagarin is, is according to Tro- Truffaut is the one who has it. Um, Truffaut mentions that they have a specific contact within the dog tribe. Uh, that you could speak with uh, to get some more information. Uh, and he, he references uh, a person by the name of Aldrin, who who is a, who is kind of a, a scaby riddled fox who lives in a, in a, in one of those like ruined cars out in the market. Be careful what you ask of him, his intelligence that he provides the resistance is very useful. We don't want to compromise his position. Uh, so it's definitely somebody you can potentially check out. Uh, but it's up to you to plan. Uh, so 
I can go ahead if you want and give you a basic pop-up. If you want to take a look at your roll 20s really quick, you can kind of see the general map of what you're looking at. Um, so just as I described, big building, about four stories. That's where the dogs mostly stay. And all of the dumpsters and rundown cars is mostly wolves and foxes because it's dogs are tend to be the higher ranking and then wolves and then foxes are usually bottom of the barrel. And so uh, Truffaut is looking expectantly at you all to plan. Like, what is your strategy for acquiring the item? This is an obvious heist we're pulling off here. We're in and out. Any of us does the do the watchers keep a database on any of us? It would be a short trip if one of the people here was recognized like you. Hmm. I am not in, not certain as to the extent of their knowledge of individuals, but I have a bit of a reputation, as you might imagine, and obviously the elders, the leaders of individual tribes are more likely to be known but each one of you specifically I would say and I don't mean offense none of you are high profile enough yet to have drawn their attention I think I'm clean I don't think anybody knows anything about me but I also didn't think anybody knew anything about my brother so I might want to pull my cap low on the way in just to make sure that I didn't somehow end up on their radar too. Yeah. The the watchers don't patrol in the large. It's just the animal mutants you have to concern yourselves with. If they recognize you from previous misdeeds or from um, illicit behavior, they could potentially harm you. Unless something horrible has befallen the lodge, you're unlikely to run into watchers on this mission. So what if we give them some kind of artifact or try to set up a meeting to get our way inside the building for a business purpose, be it to buy something or to sell something with, uh, shit, what was that guy's name, Ringo? With Ringo and myself. Ringo. Uh, Ringo has tried to trade with Gagarin before. He's very uh, prickly, very arrogant. He's better than Ringo, but to be fair, he has many good things inside. A very, very good collection. He does not like groups. He only works with one person at a time. And so uh, unlikely he would let all of us in to speak with him at once. Probably just one. Maybe only one person has to go in, and maybe the rest of us can sneak around. Mm. Ringo can be quite sneaky. Yes. And then you see him just kind of shoot a tongue out to the side and grab a fly really quick. Mm. That was choice meat. Me being small and stealthy looks at him a little bit suspiciously that he could uh, do a better job at sneaking than a little badger could. Mm. Weasel, sorry. No, you said it. You're a badger now. Things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this EMP rifle we're trying to go, it's just like any other artifact. It's not like anything special. It's just we need it for this sort of mission thing. No, it's special. It's very... Like everyone, everyone knows it's kind of special or is it like... It's special. Compared to other artifacts. It's No, it's definitely something that uh, they're unlikely to give away with a uh, giveaway willingly. You know, it's the type of thing that um, it's going to be very difficult for you to trade for. You would probably imagine it probably would have to be something that you procure in less legal ways. So whether that's like a smash and grab job, whether it's like sneak inside and steal it, I'm fixing. Can't just walk in with a ton of money and just be like, hey, that thing over there, here's money. Do you Um, have a ton of money? Please and thank you. It's not, there's no real money in this uh, universe, but it's more bartering, but that's fine. I like where your head's at. Other McLeod, items. what's your reputation in the uh, in the dog town? Do you have much of one? Uh, of course, I'm an up-and-coming 
seer. Everyone comes to me for advice. What's your What's your rank? Uh, I think it's pretty low. Let me take I think it's look. five, isn't it? Aren't seers? I think seers are fairly high rank. Right? Seers are plus three, and he's yeah. a youngster, which is two. I so I believe oh, it's five. five. Yeah. So which is I think How that's good is that? average uh, to high. I would say it's about average. Uh, you prob I mean, you probably out. Yeah. You know, you you outrank certain folks, but there's plenty. You're you're somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. Given a couple years, or given some some more accomplishments, you might be able to to move up. You definitely have a lot of potential considering your age. One day you might be running the damn thing. <laughs> but then again, with that hat, I don't know if anyone's going to take you seriously. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we know you've really grown up when you switch your hat to something else. Yeah. Like a cowboy hat. What's up, oh, partners? No. Um, I think we need to invade this this town one by one to not grow any attention onto us. If we arrive in one big group, it's obviously going to draw some attention, you know, Wolverine with Weasel and Cat and Fox and a group of chameleons all showing up in this place all at once are going to s- turn some heads. But if we show up in every five to six minutes apart, then they'll just think we're there for trade and we can o- obviously meet up somewhere and find a place to rendezvous once we're inside and meet up with this Aldrin fellow and see what he knows. Yes, yeah, you make good points. Some of us can go meet Aldred, while others can go scout the area. We can have Tchaikovsky. 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 <laughs> just call him Chai. <laughs> yeah, just with call his, me Chai for short. Chai with his assorted cart of things. He can always... Maybe someone can hide in that? Is that enough to hide in there? Um, How big was you get a wagon, right? Yeah, it's just like a red flyer type wagon. Yeah. Mm, Hamel. Maybe for Hamel. Hamel, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Uh, you would still, you need to roll a sneak test and stuff like that to see if you can pass their scout. But it's certainly, I would say that's definitely possible with Hamel, considering she's got that trait to be small. So we've got a plan to get us all in the door. Mm-hmm. And then what do we do? Are we. Does uh, Chai, how often can you use scavenge? Is that a once a once a turn or once a day thing or is can we be can he use that to kind of acquire us multiple things of you know fair value that may be used in this market that we can use for trade um just to maybe not draw any more extra attention to us you know just small knickknacks things like leather or scrap metal that we can use to actually trade for some other goods and services uh check the regularity that you can do it uh i'm not sure if there's yeah i was just digging yeah, I mean, there's like, there's different rules for like trying to get weapons or trying to get just an item. Like, I think his his the basic the basic use of his skill is like if you need something, he rolls a check to see if he can find. Like, say you needed a crowbar, he like looks in his stuff and sees if he has it. Uh, but in this case, we can say just like anything of value that might be worth worth trading at the market. Then yeah, he could probably do it. But okay. I don't know. I don't know. He'll he'll double check the frequency on it. Uh, it's unlikely you're going to be able to necessarily get one for everybody. Um, what about the land shark? Land shark's, land shark's dead. Uh, land shark's just a monster, so you're probably not going to find anything useful on it. Um, no, but meat. Oh, uh, you don't want to eat that stuff. You don't want to eat oh, monsters. Okay. Yeah, monsters are weird. and Yeah, you want to hunt regular. Like, there's plenty of regular game and stuff that you can hunt like, if you wanted to try to do food rations and things. Can't pull out all the teeth and have like sixty sharks teeth make equals like a, one make like a EMP or something. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, the the like the likelihood of you being able to trade for it is next to nothing. Uh, yeah, I'm not is, expecting to be able to trade for it. You're really just looking to get in. inside. Um, and it, so there's two things you need to get past the main gate, which can be done. All you got to do is just make a case to get inside. Um. And for some of you, that's going to be easier than others. But it's it's there's nothing again, nothing out of the ordinary for people just to show up and want to go in the lodge and trade. But then it's to get in to have an audience with Gagarin. That's more difficult. That's where it's like you have to demonstrate that you have something that you're going to trade. Like the guards at the front, they just you just need to like you just need to basically get past them with like you know dominate them or something to get through is, is all you need to worry about. Okay, so here are roles coming into this. Of course, we have Chai as our trader. He'll be coming in looking to 
some sort of service. Ringo, we'll have... too. Ringo will come. Of course, Ringo. Very, yes. Very I didn't see you there. I completely forgot. I was I was quite still, like like hard to see. You can definitely stealth up with uh, Emil. She's quite small. Maybe she can hide in the cart. Of course, we have Helena. Maybe our charmer sort of a romance. You can talk up the people around. I think you're thinking of Lavinia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Helena is a psychopath ready to kill people. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Isn't your big dream is that you want to kill people? <laughs> yeah, her big dream is that she finally wants to take a life for once instead of it. healing. Oh, God. Okay. I've got Cujo, of course. We know Gagarin's always guarded in a, maybe with thugs of some sort. He can be our big guy. Gagarin, but all right. <laughs> Gagarin. <laughs> it's, it's an astronaut's name. Don't worry about it. Cosmonaut. Okay. So, um, all right. So you got a plan to to go over and get inside, and then at that point, you figure it out from there. All right. We do such a good job with plans. Planning is like top of our. We we'll just meet up at the bar. It's, okay. There's a bunch of people there. It's gonna be harder for non dogs to get into the bar. You you do know that. Like it's not it's oh, not okay. impossible, but it's rare to see a dog like by the the bar is accessible to all in the dog tribe the higher levels of the hotel are more just for dogs Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's harder you know definitely people definitely other animals can go about the market square just fine uh, so long as they're not you know doing some sort of commotion all right so at this point um Truffaut seems satisfied with that you you know what you're doing uh at least for now at least you have some sort of idea uh and so he uh he and wild paul will wish you all good luck uh and says i leave you in the capable hands of ringo if you have any concern he is surprisingly knowledgeable about many things and uh ringo when you look over you see him just chewing on his fingernails and uh truffaut and wild paul <laughs> go ahead and leave uh, at this point, if there's anything that you all wanted to do, like if you were looking to hunt or scavenge or anything like that, now's a, a decent time. But otherwise, you'll be traveling. It's not that far where you got to go. Uh, but it's up um, to you. Helena would appreciate if Hamel would help her hunt and get more rations. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Go ahead and roll your check for that. Oh, dear. Uh, that's the special skill. So you're going to have to punch it in um, in the the uh, advanced role part. So what am I doing? Sorry. Oh, the hunt. Yeah. So it's your special skill. As I a forgot hunter. how we did this last time. Uh, just in the advanced role section of your character sheet. Mm-hmm. So it should be the bottom uh, left. Just Got it. punch in where it says total. Mm-hmm. Just punch in however many base die that you have for your agility stat, which is what hunt is based in, and then base and then a pump up as many uh, skills that you have as well. Okay. And then yeah. hit, then hit the uh, button that's on the header for advanced roll. So my total is a total between both of them. Mm-hmm. So there's that. So then I kind of come back over here and go over here. Did that roll? No, oh, here we go. I've got a pop up. It says reroll base dice one. I'm sorry. What you had a, a pop up that says what? Input value reroll base dice, and it's defaulting to one. Uh, I don't see that. I see you. You just put in seven total base die. That's not correct. Uh, you okay. ha- you have you should have a total of base die equal to your agility, which would be five. Five, right? And then underneath that, where it says skill, oh, you should yeah, put yeah. two in there, and then Got you it. hit the advanced roll button. There we go. Okay, uh, so you were very successful. Uh, so it looks like you've got three successes, um, uh, and so that should mean that you. I think you can get that amount of. So look at your skill for look at your skill for hunt. And see what those extra successes will give you. Okay. Sorry, gotta find where that is. I haven't hunted before. I don't know what this does. 
Uh, so you, for every success allows you to bring down enough game for 1d6 rations of food. So you got three successes, so now roll 3d6s. 3d6s, alright. 3d6s. Six. Six. Why are you so, this. you're so angry at your six. mouse. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... I had to move all my stuff around right, and I so don't have my silent one. So you eight. have eight rations of food. Yes. That you Yay. can distribute however you like. It's going to take a couple hours. So while everyone else is getting ready, uh, you see Hamill and Helena go out and scout the area, grab some small game, come back with some rations. Uh, McLeod, were you going to do any scrying or anything today? Yeah, I think I'll do a ritual one okay. so I don't get the penalty. Yeah, you, you would have time with their with them being gone. So what do you do as the ritual? Like, because the the book describes like a couple different ways that you go about doing it, like whether you're using a sweat lodge or like hallucinogenic herbs and plants or something like that. Like, what does it look like? When McCle- paint a picture for us of when McLeod uh, gets high and does a lot of peyote and sees things. All right. Uh, McLeod, he has to go find the tallest object in a room okay. and sit on top of it. <laughs> okay. okay. While he's there, he has to do handstand Jeez. and meditate right there. So you're you're handstanding upside down. How, does your hat stay on? Do you have a strap? Do you have like of a course it stays on? Um, <laughs> if needed, yes. Okay. All right. All right. So um, so go ahead and roll your check, and then we'll see what you see based on that. So it should be same thing. That I just explained to Melissa, you go to the advanced role, mm-hmm. you add a number of base dice equal to your attribute, and you add a number of skill dice equal to your skill, and then you go ahead and roll that skill. Instinct. Okay. So let's Did it work. Uh, one yeah one success. one success so you got one cool. success so you don't get any extra bonuses or anything like that but you were successful so basically you see visions of the future showing a certain action who performs it and if it succeeds or not you the player decide what the vision shows and you should describe it for everyone to hear if the action you have predicted is actually carried out later in the session regardless of if you if you are present or not it is affected by your prediction so um, if you predicted that the action would succeed, then the amount of successes that you rolled are added to the roll for the action. If you predicted that the action would fail, then the amount of successes that you rolled would eliminate successes on that action. So like hypothetically, if you predicted that Cujo would successfully dominate the guards to get inside, then when he goes to roll his dominate his dominance check to get inside, then that extra that extra success that you just rolled on your scry will be added to his successes. Does that make sense? So what are you, what are what is, uh, what are you predicting? Oh yes. It's coming to me <laughs> later in the evening as we meet up with Gagarin. The, the object he brings out is the rifle and we actually successfully acquire it. Got to be more specific than that, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's got to be like rel- related to a check of some We kind. succeed yeah, in yeah, our absolutely. mission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every it's got to be more right. along the lines of like, when we negotiate with Gagarin, like we succeed at our dominance check. Or when we try to like sneak past the guards, like mm. we're, it's something like that. Oh yeah, okay. I'll do... Maybe we can get it as a type of loan and, <laughs> and promise to bring him something back of even more value. Yeah. I would say McLeod, you wouldn't even trust that vision. You would know that to be probably a falsehood. <laughs> uh, we'll have like some of his bodyguards will fail to sense. Okay. Like a mill or something like yeah. that. Perfect. Yeah. So if at any point, any of the gu- guards have to roll a scout check against your stealth, then they'll get minus one. So just remember that. It's your job to remember okay. that if we ever have to do that kind of thing. Perfect. Uh, okay, so before we leave, uh, Derek or Logan, are you, are you all doing anything? Yeah, am I able to uh, forage for grub for myself? I wasn't sure if that's the same as hunting. You know, I imagine it's more like no nature. 
Uh, so specifically, I'm not a meat eater. <laughs> hunters are sp- hunters are specific. Hunter isn't necessarily like just killing things. It could be small game. Oh. It could also be water in certain cases. Uh, so you can get so it, like the rations like it's abstracted somewhat. So it's not just steak. She brought back. She could have brought back berries, and you could ask for some berries or something like that. Gotcha. So, okay, so then I don't have to worry about doing a separate check. Uh, no, like you can okay. you can ask to have some of the rations. Like that's kind of her role. Like she's the hunter. She's and know. I would say that you know gotcha. because um kind of you're one of the characters that I kind of look up to and want to help. That I would probably like understand your dietary preferences and make sure that while we were out doing hunting, like yeah. I definitely got whatever your favorite thing is that mm-hmm. was on my list of things to make sure that you got exactly what you wanted. Gotcha. Okay. Thank what, you. What is Chai's favorite favorite thing to eat? <laughs> No, oh, I mean, you open chai is door. all about yeah. Chai is all about mango. Mango, okay. Mango, okay. Right on. Like Wait, it. where the land shark was? There's a mango tree. <laughs> Perfect. This is what we need. Okay, uh, Logan, did you want to do anything for your character? Nope. Okay, so you uh, around midday, noonish, you start heading out. Uh, it's not that far. It's a, it's about an, an hour hike or so uh, over to the lodge. Um, there, there's a couple different ways you can travel whether you want to go over roads or whether you want to go over just this forest ringo stresses that it's roads can be dangerous roads are where you might run into watchers more frequently and stuff like that and so while it's not like you can never travel them it's just on a mission be you know unless you have to be careful and it's a short enough travel and uh but it takes about an hour and you all eventually arrive at the uh at the actual dog camp no problem and uh i'm not going to put this on the stream for everybody but just to kind of give you guys a kind of look at where we are i'm going to pull you over to a generic map i have for for the dog habitat um so let's see if this is actually showing on the uh i'll give a quick look so over on the, so that's like the, so I'm showing on the stream right now, that's kind of like the generic map uh, for the dog habitat. But then if you want to look even a little closer, there's this one. Uh, so this is kind of where they're at right now. All right. So, so you come up to the, uh, to sort of the front gate. Um, I, I have you on the map there, but don't feel like you have to be on the map in that way. Like you guys can come up one by one. So who's who's approaching the gate first? I will. Okay. All right. Is anyone going with you? Um, McLeod. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. So as the two of you walk up, uh, a, a beefy looking Wolverine and a goofy looking uh, a goofy looking fox with a hat on his head. Um, the you can see that there are two wolves uh, right in front of the gate. Uh, the gate is closed, but you've you can see people have gone in and out, uh, so it's been opened and people have gone in. And you also see that the gate is flanked on either side uh, to the east and west by uh, by different uh, by different guards uh, who are looking down and kind of looking back inward and looking back out. Uh, so you can see that. They they have the entrance well well covered at least during the day, uh, but as you approach the the lo- one of the guards uh, this sort of white furred wolf uh, steps forward, and kind of takes a look at you, uh, McLeod, and he's towering over you, much taller. And, Where have you been, and why do you bring this? And he looks at you, I tell you, Badger. Ah, I'm a Wolverine. You all look the same to me. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a dominate check real quick. Okay. I like it. Um so there's a couple geared. so there's a couple factors to it. Uh before you uh well you already rolled. Sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. There's a couple factors to it. So like uh rank can add modifications, the amount of people in your party versus the amount of people in their party. Uh, can add modifications. Like if you come up with a big group versus a small group, it's, you can get some modifications, things like that. Um, and so what's so your, my, 
I'm a uh, rank six, and we have six people in our party. Okay, so you would actually gain uh, two, two. A plus two modification, and it's only I just roll a two d six for that. Yeah, you just roll two d six. So we're gonna call it plus two modification. No successes there. You okay. got one success, uh, yeah. but dominance is contested against his uh, his sense emotion. So let me pull up a quick sense emotion. Um, on the bright side, he doesn't have anything in sense of sense of motion. So here we go. Also, when you do dominance checks, uh, if you have gear bonuses uh, on certain items, so like you have your face mask, uh, the hockey mask, that can be added as well. So there's those things. I wasn't wearing it at the time. Okay. So, uh, and that's going to succeed. Uh, during a dominance check, only the aggressor can actually push, I believe. So I think it's only you that can push. Hey, okay. Justin just went live on Twitch. Because he's, he's a jerk and he can't watch us. Uh, so he did that last week too. Yeah. So just for a continuity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, so anyway, the so as you kind of get bigger and kind of look a little threatening, like the, like he kind of s- steps back a bit. So calm down. No reason to get angry. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a feisty one, but we're just here coming back, show him around. Coming back from where? Of course, exploring outside, staying here all the time. It's just, you guys smell. <laughs> he kind of looks down. <laughs> mm. Go in, but I'll be watching you. And uh, the other guard that's standing at the gate opens the door, opens the gate slightly and allows the two of you uh, to come on in. Uh, what are the rest of you doing now? The rest Pim. of the group. Pam was uh, hiding yeah. in Chai's cart. Okay. That's yeah, so I'm going to go up to the guards. I'm going to be, you know, I've got my, my walking stick in one hand, my trench coat on, and I'm pulling the wagon with my tail. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just going to, yeah, walk right up to the gate and just act like I'm going to go right in. So he, he looks at you for a second. And he's like, what do you have for trade? And then you just, what do you do to kind of just, you don't have to roll any sort of check, but you just. Yeah. Kind of eyeing um, up. So, so normally Chai is like looks really grumpy, resting bitch face type thing. Um, and so, upon hearing that, he kind of like you know glares at. And these are wolverines that are guarding the gate. Uh, no, these are wolves. Wolves. Okay, he glares at the wolf, and he's like, he starts to glare, and then he picks up a piece of wood, and he's like, well, I've got some, I've got some materials to trade here, and you'll notice that I've got some alder. It's a, it's a relatively soft hardwood, it's a medium density. It's excellent it's cut from and he just goes into this big spiel hoping to bore them to death and, and like half halfway like they're like all right all right just <laughs> just go uh however i want hamill to make a stealth test uh and i'm gonna give you a plus one modification since you're like hiding out inside of the uh, uh of the cart so remember that a modification just means you can temporarily bump your skill die by one and just always remember to put it back down after the check so it's so a be- sneak mm-hmm and so this is going to be a scout test. So as you're going in, he, they're they're both kind of like peering at the the equipment and the wagon that's being drawn in. And so he's going to roll a scout test. And if he gets a success, don't forget that because of McLeod's uh, scrying, uh, if necessary, uh, well, if if he rolls a success, it'll 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 go against it. So you got three successes. Very good. Ooh. And then one success, but you win. Uh, that was so, a big stealth. Yeah, and so you get in just fine. Uh, and then uh, last but not least, uh, Helena and Ringo are still outside. Yeah. What say you, me? Uh, blow this pop stand. Go watch movie. <laughs> Ringo don't know what movie is. <laughs> but I've always heard sounds good. Yeah, very good. And, and Helena just kind of shakes her head and she goes, no, Ringo, let's, let's go inside. Hmm. Okay, well, you have fun out here talking to them. I don't know if a wolf cat get long good, but uh, Ringo gets in fine. So Ringo will go up uh, and... Uh, oh, and Helena's going to go walk right with him. Okay, and and Ringo, much like Chai, is going to go into the spiel, talk, showing all the different things he can, he can trade. He's holding up basically trash, uh, but they know Ringo and they eventually let him through. But as you go to follow, one of them kind of quickly puts out like a club blocking the way and say, wait a second, little kitty. What business do you have in here? 
So Ringo is like, sorry, see you inside. And he keeps going. <laughs> and, and Helen is just going to look at him and go, well, obviously I need to procure more items for my trade. And she lifts up her medical bag. I, I don't know what you're showing me. Uh, and he kind of like, what does the, the bag look like? It's just like a, your, t- it's actually kind of a rather like floofy purse, but it's got a red <laughs> cross painted on it. And, <laughs> and she goes, obviously this is my medical bag. And then she, you should, you should insult his eyesight. Like, do you need glasses? Should I do a check <laughs> 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 and, and she's just like, uh, my clan had some run-in with the, with the watchers and there's some some more healing that needs to be done than what I had materials for. Uh, so you got to roll a dominate check to get in, uh, but I'll give you a plus one modification uh, for like showing and trying to guilt with the the whole medicine bag. So go ahead and get a plus one, but you got to roll. Um, what's your what's your rank? Uh, five. Uh, you can get a plus one for that as well. So you have, a, you have two modifications that you can use for this. So okay. again, so temporarily boost up your dominate skill by two just for this roll and then drop it back down after the roll. Okay. Uh, so you're going to end up. I don't up... really have push it. To dominate. Push it. And that's a zero. You're going to have to, <gasps> you're going to have to push it. Now you're the aggressor in this situation. So you can push, he can't push. So, but okay. you can push. So, and you're going to, yeah. What is it? Oh. Uh, I heard that you hear this, make your own materials. Go away, kitty. Run along. And they uh and they are not letting you in. Oh. So okay. is that yeah, you're not allowed in. Okay. Meanwhile, on the inside. But uh, cats are good at jumping fences, so I mean you just you're welcome to look around the perimeter. I'll uh, I'll wait till dark if that's what's happening. Okay. Uh dark's gonna be a little while. You guys got here the equivalent of like one in the afternoon, so you got a couple hours still before sun sunset. Uh you do know from from McLeod and from Truffaut and Ringo that the there's while there there's guards twenty four hours a day definitely guards at night there's a there's a lower number but they're still around uh, but inside uh, you can see that it's a it's a proper shithole uh, there's there's all sorts of rusted rundown cars uh, there's all sorts of just tires and crates stacked up with overgrown moss and weeds there's mud. Uh, and, and kind of some sort of water or other liquid. You're not even sure what. Uh, there's uh, there's quite a few like ramshackle tents set up, and you can see that there are like little uh, little desks uh, that have been repurposed, like student desks and stuff, to to display various goods uh, that uh, for trade. So a lot of scrap and stuff. Uh, Ringo uh, quickly says, no, Ringo must go do some business, so I uh, I shall see you in a short time. Oh, by the way, your cat friend oh, couldn't get inside. See you. Bye-bye. And then he's going to go. Uh, it's like the character in a tutorial where he just comes up and disappears. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. I like, I like to do the Ringo voice because it's like my old goblin voice and stuff that I did back when we played D&D. Uh, and so you see the large four-story... Uh, four-story lodge uh you can see there's guards in front of it you can you can kind of point out mcleod if you want a variety of other places you can point out the gagarin scrap uh scrap cabin where another one of those guards uh these wolf guards uh, are, are are hanging out in front of it um there's all sorts of foxes and wolves that are either you know napping inside of these rundown cars or they're outside in these uh, little little social setups like couches and repurposed chairs playing cards there's toilets that are being used as seats um uh, you can see that there is this small place in the towards the southeast to the right of the gate as you come in uh there's like a gallows set up uh no one's no one's hanging from them yet but there's uh there's definitely yet yeah yeah <laughs> uh and uh yeah what would you guys like to do inside so yeah, this is where I live. I wouldn't call it home necessarily, but temporarily. Uh, this place became more of a dump since I was last here. Yeah, it looks pretty bad. Yeah, it's all of O'Donnell's faults. This place is coming to ruins. O'Donnell, uh, by the way, is the is the tribe elder, if you all didn't remember that. Okay. Sorry, Long, what are you going to do? 
Uh, I think we'll wander around, look for this Scrangy Fox fella. What's his name again? Aldrin. 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 Okay. Uh, you know, uh, as you ask some of your your dog friends and your and your fox friends and stuff, uh, and since he is a fox as well, it's easier for you to acquire the information. There's maybe 200 or so people here, like different animals coming in and out. And most of you know each other. Uh, some are not as friendly as others. Uh, but you know that he lives uh, in a rusted down uh, Pontiac Firebird, uh, just you know, it's kind of to the northeast side of camp, um, over uh, kind of right next to the lodge, behind like this, this the big blue tent. So, um, if you're looking at the map, the map's not necessary; it's just there for funsies for us. Uh, but I just pinged it for you. But northeast side. Um, when you pass over there, when you start kind of wandering in that direction, you can see that there are lodge. There's a lodge guard that is patrolling the market and occasionally is like breaking up a dominance situation where people are fighting. Uh, you can see another is patrol. A couple more are patrolling the interior of the of the fence itself. Uh, there's somebody. There's one standing outside of the lodge. Um, Helena, you can see that there's another one that's patrolling around the outside uh, of the perimeter, uh, and you can see that you're not the only one who's been rejected entry as. You know, people are kind of wandering away, hat in hand, very upset. Um, but when the four of you, are, are, I'm assuming, is it all four of you that are going to go see Aldrin, or, or are you splitting up? At some point, um, Chai will need to go down like an alley or something and tell me when it's safe to come out. Because right now, I'm just buried in the bottom of his uh, area, not seeing anything right now. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of planning to just like pull Lead my wagon along. <laughs> I was going to walk along the uh, fence to find like a secluded spot where you could jump out, but also see if there's like any place where Helena could scale the wall if it's necessary. Um, yeah, go ahead if you would like. Uh, if you're going to make it look like I'm just like looking for scrap or just being a crazy old timer. So if you're looking for, so wait, you're you're going around the inside and you're right. What is Helena? What are you doing? Like I want to brew a potion okay so you're gonna spend some time uh you're gonna spend like spend the next couple hours collecting some got her skirts hiked up as she's stomping into the forest she's pulling a dr quinn (laughs) medicine woman yeah and she's gonna she's gonna try and make a potion okay um so what kind of potion do you want to make um, there clarity. are a few options that mm-hmm. I could do. I could do healing, invigorating, stimulating, intoxicating, sedating, and lethal. Okay. Um, I'm feeling a little bit sedating. Okay. So go, <laughs> so go ahead and roll your check. Same thing as before. I told the long and, and to, to Melissa about punching in the, the base and the so skill die. Base is. Four, two. It always pops up that thing. So I have one success. Okay. Uh, that should be enough to brew uh, the potion. Um, so. On... So it's success. The de- uh, decoction has the desired effect. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone I roll uh, gives one dose. So I have one dose. You have one dose of sedating. So. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so, what are the rest of you doing? So, one of you is scouting. I heard was it, who's who is scouting around for an entrance. Chai. Okay. So, when you look around, you notice that there's there's no other way in, but the gate itself is, or the fence itself isn't like a perfect, isn't perfectly continuous all the way around. It's more like ramshackle, like where little pieces of sheet metal and other repurposed items have been piece together along the way it's very patchy and if you spent some time and you try to force it you could certainly open up a hole uh in the fence uh though you would have to be very quiet about doing so um and you would i would say you would probably worry about how much noise it would make and you would have to make every effort to do it quietly i have gotcha i have an idea let's hear it so chai is going to create a distraction with Ringo. They're going to go start a negotiation and they're going to cause a lot of drama. Meanwhile, McLeod and I are going to go to this location that's been scouted out. 
McLeod's going to be my lookout and I'm going to force open this part in the wall where Helena can come inside. Okay. What do you all think? That doesn't sound like a bad idea to me. One thing uh, real quick on the map, I was going to walk behind the smaller of the two buildings where it, there's it's cutting off like the view. And as long as the guard isn't patrolling on the outside of the fence, I was going to have um, Hamill jump out of my wagon there. Yeah, that's fine. You should be okay doing that. Um, I'll have, I will still have Hamill roll another sneak test uh, just okay. to make sure that she hops out. So go ahead and roll a sneak test, uh, Hamill. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Successful. Yeah, you pop out. On the ball of the sneaks. No issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got like a banana peel stuck in your hair. <laughs> There's like a broken bifocal like right right in your eye that's just screwing up your, your eyesight for a minute. And you kind of dust it off and throw it back in his disgusting wagon. Uh, with hey, hey, hey. All this nonsense that he puts in there. <laughs> okay. Um, and so so then Cujo is going to go try. He's going to try to to bust open a fence at some point. While the rest of you are, are distractions or running distraction. Is that right? Yeah, I want McLeod to be my lookout. I want to, I want him to kind of look out for any guards and things like that. He's sure. kind of the most uh, inconspicuous since he kind of blends in with everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, and then Chai and Ringo are going to be bartering and then hopefully become upset at some sort of deal or mm -hmm. yeah, some like fighting sort of with item each they, other. Exactly. Yeah. Causing a very large commotion to hopefully cover up any sound that I may be making opening up this fence. Okay. Okay. I'll Maybe get some of the guards' attention and, and get uh, any attention that may be drawn onto me, you know? Are you going to try to flag down Helena first? Because Helena has, uh, like, she she disappeared from the front gate. She's she's wandered off at this point. Maybe um, we could have Hamill. Maybe if the opening's small enough that Hamill can fit through and okay. acquire Helena. I sure. can go out and find her. That'll sure. work. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Uh, during the day, this is going to, I mean, there's more people around, so you're, it's going to be modified negatively, but then you've got a lot of other diversionary tactics that are going on that'll, that'll give you, give you bonuses to this. So normally during the day when you, you're, you're making a sneak test to try to, uh, to try to open it up, uh, kind of quietly. Um, and you're also looking to, uh, I'm sorry, you're making a force test, uh, to, uh, to kind of pry it open. Um, I think force would be more appropriate. Yeah. I'm just trying to make sure there's the whole quiet stuff. Uh, so it's PC. Okay. So yeah, you can go ahead and force it. And I would say because, uh, because people are helping uh, distract, I'll give you like a plus one modification so that you're doing it sort of slowly and trying to keep it quiet, like inch by inch by inch. So you get a plus one mod uh, based on it. So go ahead and roll force. Okay. Can I, is this just barehanded? Do I use any weapons at all? Or is this just, if you have any items, you can use them and that'll give you a gear bonus as well. If you want to, if you want to, if you have like a weapon or something like that, you can go ahead and add a gear bonus. Okay. It's up to you. A stick, st stick my spiked club in there and pry or it open. You could look for a cro like a crowbar or something. You can have Tchaikovsky do his, do uh, his scavenge. Crowbar, you say. If he's got anything mm. in his wagon to help you, you could do that as well. I like, I like the uh, crowbar idea before I roll this uh, force check. Right now, I have a plus two bonus just from my spiked club, and it's so I don't know if a crowbar would maybe give us a little bit of extra advantage yeah. to prying this open. I so, could definitely try. Yeah, go for it. Okay, um, should be a straight scavenge check, right? Yeah, straight scavenge. Uh, let's see, rolling zero to six. That did not. Zero, nope. Ring. No, that's. You didn't have any base die rolled. Did you put your base die in? Um, so I wasn't doing an advanced roll. I guess maybe I put something in the wrong spot. Yeah, I was just do an advanced you need a, You need to do yeah, an advanced, do advanced roll advanced for your roll. Gotcha. My bad. for your specialist skills. All the other ones are just a push of a button. Okay. There we go. So you got one success. So basically it's a so if you just get one success with a scavenge, it's it's a one use item. Yep. Uh, so you'll get the one use item. Uh, and so you give that to him. Uh takes you just a couple of minutes uh, as you're as you're piecing as you're putting everything back the way it was uh, after after Hamill hops out you take a, a couple extra minutes as well to reorganize things as best you can and pull out something as well um, so you can so basically you get an extra plus one so you're up to that's another mod an extra mod so you should have plus one Alrighty. mod plus one mod from the diversion plus one mod from the item from the from the item uh, and then whatever your normal skills and stuff are. 
Alrighty. So we're going to wait for the perfect opportunity. We're going to wait till Hamill comes back, gives us the thumbs up. Chai and uh, Ringo, we're going to create a huge distraction, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully divert some attention. And then as soon as Helen is close, I am going to rip the hell out of this door with all of my might. So I'm going to be going out looking for her. Do I need to roll anything for my... Not just yet. He's got to open it up first, which he successfully does. Uh, Good job. So, so you get the thumbs up uh, from, from McLeod, and then Ringo and Chai are supposed to be the ones doing the distraction. Uh, and so, and so Ringo, uh, is looking at Chai at this point as, as the two of you are in the, in the market area, like the closest stall to where you're, where you're at and like, what are we supposed to do? I don't understand. Like, okay. Um, I hand him a banana peel, the one that fell off of Hamill's head earlier. And then I start screaming at him. I didn't say that you could eat it. We are, that you didn't purchase it. You don't just eat something that's, that was grown in the Alps on the closest mountain to the base. What's the matter with you? Pay me now. It's like making a big scene about it, just screaming at Ringo. Why are you yelling at Ringo? I don't, you, you handed it to me. Um, but here, if you want it back, you can. It for, it it's useless to me now. You ate the banana. I gave it to you to look at, not to eat. And you just popped it in your mouth. What's the matter with you? And I start why chucking are, like pieces of scrap metal at things. Why are you getting so angry? You, you <laughs> handed it to me, and he's very kind. I don't understand why this is happening. <laughs> um, it's it's just a banana peel. It's not even good when it's brown. Not even you yellow. ate the banana that was in the peel. You I, idiot! I just tasted it just a little bit, and then I, I, you know, and then, um, and then he calls over to one of the guards, like, I don't know why he's yelling at me. I didn't do anything. <laughs> and the guard kind of comes, wanders over, and is like, What's going on here? Da 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 da. da. And uh, and Ringo's like, well, you'll see. He handed me a banana peel, and I thought he was giving it to me because we are friends. And then I eat it, and now he yells at me. I don't understand why he's yelling at me. It's very embarrassing. Ringo has a reputation. And so you spend a couple of minutes, and eventually, uh, eventually, the guard just says to shut the hell up, and you get the thumbs up from a cloud that everything worked out okay. And when the guard leaves, uh, Ringo looks at you. Completely confused and dumbfounded. I am very upset with you. There is no reason for you to yell at me. <laughs> I, I just no, no, no. I don't want to. I, I just pat him no, on the shoulder. Ringo, no, do not touch. Ringo, very upset right now. And so I have business to attend to. If you don't understand that Ringo has a reputation, I can't help you. And so he uh, he's gonna depart and go do something else. Okay. Uh, all right. So. Uh, Kujo forced it open just fine. Uh, you make a mental note of where this is uh, and remember for later. Um, and it was like sort of like towards the northeastish area, right? That's what you're kind of over by Aldrin's stuff is what you're kind of looking for. And yeah. then, uh, and then Hamill, go ahead and roll a sneak test if you wanna wanna hop on out uh, without anybody anybody seeing you, uh, because there are patrols that go around the inside and the outside of the fence. Uh, you've Okay, so you've made the like the the actual item is you know the the hole I mean is a uh, it's not really noticeable unless you know to look for it because it's such a patchy and gross looking thing you can just kind of move the flap slightly. Uh, you didn't get any successes. You're gonna have to push that if you want to avoid detection. All right, here goes. Okay, hey, you're Ooh, good. So you push, right. no well trauma, done. and you wait and you wait. Cujo might be like looking up and maybe seeing like now now's a good time and you dart out um go ahead and uh go ahead and roll a check to see if you how long it takes you to find helena or do you want me to roll um we could do scout okay um you find her but it, it takes you like a good mm. you know hour or so to find her and she's in the process of picking flowers, very uh, in a, in a huff. And uh, you kind of hang out with her while she she makes the, the potion. Yeah, I kind of come up and I'm like, "We're we're trying to sneak you in. What are you doing? Are you just like shopping out here? What what are you doing?" Oh, love! I was definitely going to give them something to have a taste of my ire. As she just continues to just snatch more flowers, as she's crushing oh. one in her mortar and pestle that she happens to have with her. Nice. Or we 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 broke a hole in the fence, and you can just Angrily. sneak in the fence. That's that that's another way to do this too. 
that's we'll try that but i'd like to have this on hand okay. are you almost done because they're kind of waiting for us they're making a whole scene and whatnot so yes love give in. me about, about a few minutes i'm nearly nearly done and so Hamels is kind of going to anxiously just sort of like be darting darting around and just kind of running back and forth like anxious energy waiting to get back okay yeah, do, I can actually do you need that. my sedating potion? Because I can provide that as well. No, no, no. Please, no, no, no. please have I'm a good. seat, love. But... <laughs> She'll just kind of, but the kind of like tails just sort of still. Like... I know. And then when you sit down, Helena like pats your head and thank you as she goes back to work. <laughs> nice. Okay. So you, you finish collecting mm-hmm. the materials, you brew, brew the potion. Uh, so you come back. It's like an hour. It's like an hour and a half, two hours since Hamill went out there. The rest of you have been kind of moving around. Are you going to wait for them to talk to Ultron? Are you going to the three of you go there by yourselves? I don't think we need to go as a group. We might bring too much attention to him. Yeah, I think okay. smaller groups mm-hmm. the better. Okay, so who's who's going to go talk to him? Yeah, I'll meet up with them. Okay, anybody anybody going with McLeod? I would, I'm going to stick with McLeod as much as possible. Okay. Uh, just sewers. Okay, Tchaikovsky, what are you going to be doing? Are you just going to hawk in some wares, or are you going to go along? Yeah, I'm going to amble about and just look for stuff to scrap or scavenge. And every time you get close to Ringo, he looks at you like genuinely hurt and just quickly pushes his shopping cart away from you. Oh, <laughs> talking to this one. This one's very mean. Uh, <laughs> but you go over to the Pontiac Firebird uh, that you know to be home to Aldrin, and you can see that there's a window, but it's like a cardboard window with like duct tape and stuff on it. You knock on the outside and the door opens up and you can see that the the seats have been, the seat backs have been like ripped out. And there's like, uh, there's like these old mattresses and stuff on the bottom to cover the springs. And you can see that uh, he's in there kind of by himself at this point. Uh, and he seems to, he sees you and he says, what do you want? Hey, Aldrin. Oof. Taking a bath recently. That's very insensitive. Very insensitive. I have a condition. And you see him just start scratching. Very rude of you. You look stupid in that hat. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's what they all say, but they don't understand. Mm. It's, I'm, I'm here because we're looking for a, a certain artifact. I, I don't do anything in artifacts. You know where to go. Leave me alone. And he goes to close the door at that point as he slowly starts to put And it's like going very slowly. Like, hey, 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 hey. What? I told you, I don't have any artifacts. I don't deal with them. You know where to go. Well, so with me with the guard, Gagarin. You mean Gagarin? Yes. G- Gagarin. Gagarin, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you want from me? What, what can you tell me about him? Yeah. He's a real son of a bitch, if you ask me. And he laughs a little. <laughs> real son of a bitch. Is in the pocket of that old Donald fool and kind of looks up and spits at the ground and stuff like that. Yeah, those dogs think they know everything. They think they can just run all over us. They can just do mm. whatever they like. Mm. What do I know about him? I know he's a son of a bitch, and I know he's a greedy son of a bitch, and I know he's a greedy paranoid son of a bitch. That's what I know. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> oh, this guy? Yeah, he looks at like Cujo. Who is? Oh, that? you know, a friend from outside. He actually believes in my visions. Can you believe that? Well, he's an idiot then. <laughs> this one here, this little one, he's a fool. I tell you, once predicted that I would be wealthy. Well, that's never happened, now, is it? I'm still in this shithole, aren't I? Hey, your time will come. Your time will come. Mm. You keep saying that. I don't agree. I don't believe you. Hmm. Little puppy, you seem to like talking. Why don't you give us some information of importance? Puppy? Did you just call me puppy? <laughs> Who do you think you are? I'm old enough to be your grandfather. I'm not a puppy. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up and I'm gonna just put my big clawed palm like over its snout and just hold it close and said, The next words out of your mouth better be of importance to us, or I swear to God I'll make a scene. <laughs> right. And then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna slowly let go of his snout. <laughs> roll a dominance. Roll a dominance check. <laughs> uh, Since a, it's two two to one, that's uh, you get one a plus bonus. one because because McLeod's there. And then do you? Uh, what's your rank again? Six. Uh, let me double check his rank. I don't remember. Um, he has scabies, so it's got to be no more than three. 
<laughs> he's a scavenger. <laughs> Scavengers don't have particularly. Uh, he's rank four, so plus two bonus. Uh, so it should be plus two from that. Plus one. She have plus three mod for this. Damn. I'll roll. Did it? Oh, here we go. All, right. All those dice, and you only get one. That's still still good enough. And he says, "Wait, it didn't roll. No, it all did. the right one. Well, you still got a success, so you're good. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you don't really do. There's no reason to push that or anything because you got your success. He didn't get any success on the sense of motion, and so as you let go, he says, "All right then. <laughs> step, in. <laughs> step into my office." And he pushes the door open a little bit further as it's dragging across the ground. And the two of you step inside and he closes it. And then he uh, kind of lets one of the the front windshields, like there's like one of those uh, windshield blockers, uh, like the sun blockers. He kind of pushes it a little bit closer, uh, close. <laughs> so like you get some privacy. What is it you want? We heard this McGannon fellow that you speak of has an artifact that we need. One that is said to kill the watchers, kill the sentinels in a single blow. We need to know how to procure a meeting with him. Oh, and... you're from the resistance, aren't you? You're from the resistance, aren't you? Oh, man, why did you just say so? And he looks over at McLeod. I didn't know you were a part of this. Oh, I'm so surprised. Uh, his name is Garen, by the way. Everyone seems to have trouble pronouncing it. I don't know why. <laughs> Garen. It's right there. Uh, you want to procure an item from? Well, I can tell you this. He keeps uh, that EMP rifle really near and dear to his heart under lock and key and then under another lock and key. It's quite ridiculous. He loves it even more than he loves that coffee f- coffee maker of his. If you want to if you want to talk to him, there's really only one way. If you got something to trade, you show him, go inside, and he'll make the trade. But once you're inside, then you got to figure out something else to do. I don't know what you can do because those lodge guards are always going to be around because they're always going to be there. And he's like itching the whole time like he's a meth addict. He's going crazy. Guards. You say guards. How many guards? Oh, just the one. Well, on the inside, anyway. There's one all... single guard, one guard on the inside with Gagarin. Well, he's got the one out front, and then if you want to get inside, you got to talk to the guard, and if the guard lets you inside, then you can go inside, but then the guard's going to come with you, and then it's going to be two to one in there, and you can't go in. Two of you can't go in. Only one of you can go in. What kind of items does he like dealing with? Oh, he really loves his coffee. I'll tell you this. Loves that coffee maker. Got any coffee filters? If you got coffee filters, he'll definitely want to make that trade. Oh, those Boston Terriers. Oh, such an arrogant coffee drinking rat. Terrible people, I tell you. Very rude. Always edgy. I don't know why they're so upset all the time. They're very high strung. McLeod, is there any information you need from this <laughs> puppy? Well, that's I feel like he's rude. giving us quite a bit of info here. Let's see if the markets have anything with coffee. Maybe... Chai can pull something up. I'm gonna I'm gonna nip at Alderin's ear and say, Now don't you go anywhere, little puppy. We may be back. Why would I wanna go anywhere? I'm inside <laughs> my home. And don't forget, I have scabies. You might have just contracted scabies. Oh jeez. Okay. <laughs> We're all on the same side here. So I think at this point we should um leave and then meet up and try and think of a plan. We know that uh Garen likes stealing in coffee that he's at most going to have two guards with him to our knowledge. Um, we need to find a way to get someone in there um, who can either negotiate or maybe I wouldn't say poison, but maybe slip a potion to the people inside um, and be able to grab this gun. Mm-hmm. Ah, so we sedate him. Wow. I think someone should just seduce him. <laughs> that's Ringo's job is, is there a seduce check <laughs> Ringo is still very up the sense of motion <laughs> and everyone's everyone's into BDSM so it's all just dominate okay so you guys go ahead and leave Aldrin uh, and you eventually about two hours later all are able to get in, uh, get to kind of meet it up Hamill and Helena need to roll sneak tests to get back inside Okay. Yeah. Uh, these are going to, this is daytime. <clears throat> these are going to be at a minus two modification. Oh, God. Okay. Are we sure? And Helena like looks at Hamill and she's like, are we sure that we don't want to wait for the cover of evening? 
Yeah, at this oh, point, <laughs> Hamill, <laughs> Hamill's like, nah, I'm Hamill's in. Like, <laughs> later. I'm in. Okay. Hamill's been so anxious the whole time to get back. <laughs> Hamill is not, like, okay. really looking to wait. Okay. okay. You have five agility, actually? Yeah. Or uh, five, uh, I mean, five and sneak? No, I have five agility. I just rolled my sneak ability, but I did my modifier. I got rid of my two points in it. Did I do that correct or no? Uh, you have you have, you rolled five yellow dice, which means that you have you have a you have a five skill in sneak. I have, so I have five agility. I just clicked my sneak button, but I I had two points in it, but I removed them because you said it was. A um, I meant five modifier. agility. No, no, no. You're right. You have five agility. You're good. Yeah. And then it's a negative two modifier, so we're not counting the green die then because you don't have any agility. Okay. So. Yeah. All right, so we'll just ignore the green die if you have to push, but that's that's there's no successes there. Hamill, you got to do the same thing. Same I did place. earlier, so my roll is above hers. Oh, okay. Um, so I I ended up with the same thing as her because um, okay. I also have five agility and two in sneak. I'm not sure that the minus two ended up working. It looks like you passed yeah. though, right? At least once. Did you add the minus two modification, Melissa? I tried to do it. it would, I don't know I, that it worked. I don't know if there's an issue going on with roll 20 because, like I said, when I did my dominate and I put like six points into it because you gave me the plus three, it didn't show up right when I did the dominate, like the actual amount of dice that mm. came out. So I don't know if there's a a minor so... thing going on. Yeah, because I've because I've got two green and five yellow, which would be everything's working to did... my original character sheet. Okay, so you have a you have a minus two modification, which means you shouldn't have two green. So you should have put zero into sneak, and I'm gonna roll it right now and see if this works. And that worked just fine for me. And so that's what it should look like. You just change the uh, sneak okay. from two to zero because okay. of the modification. I was yeah. doing it in the pop up. Not and I'll do the there. same okay. thing for Ashley really quick. So yeah, don't don't do the pop thing. Oh okay. yeah, I didn't see the pop. Okay, up. so same thing with Ashley. I'll roll that. Okay, so Ashley got uh, Helena got one success, and then Hamill has zero successes for this. Um, you're gonna have to push if you're gonna want to get inside. Yes. Uh, so I can. Can I push? Yeah. Hold on. I'll, I'll, so I think you, I, I think I'll have to hit it because I technically rolled it. So. So you can't. Yeah. You can't modify if it's in a pop out window. It just the pop out window didn't work to modify it because I put in a minus two. Hang on, let's see. Mm. Uh, all right. I wonder so, if it's because Helena rolled. Uh, I think it's because I rolled it for her. There we go. Oh. Not, yeah, so you rolled one for Hamill and then one for Helena. I wonder if the Helena one overrode Hamill's. Good call. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'll, it's basically the same roll, so I'll just do, just do the same roll. Push Helena's and that'll be mine. Uh, no, it won't, actually, because she already got a success and a fail, so we don't want to do that. Uh, so, do you want me to just roll it again? Yeah, just make sure that you, you give yourself a zero and sneak before you hit the sneak roll. Okay, so minus, minus. And then just hit the die. Okay, so that is a fail. Uh, it's a fail. And you're going to also take uh, one point of fatigue. Uh, for some reason, your green still went through. I don't know why. It worked just fine for me, but you shouldn't have had any green there. But we're ignoring yeah, it. Yeah, that's weird. Um, I know. So take one point of fatigue. As you're trying so hard to be quiet, uh, you're just you're just, but you're running around so fast that you just kind of lose your breath. So take a point of fatigue. Okay. Uh, and then let me see if the the actual guards see you because they it's compared to their scout. Which strangely enough, despite the fact that they're guards, they don't have any skill points in skill. <laughs> uh, don't they also get a minus from a long or I'm sorry, uh, McLeod's vision? Uh, Ooh. yes, actually we'll carry that over. Cause it wasn't needed. Cause I didn't roll any successes for the one that, uh, Logan rolled in the, or the, the one that Hamill rolled in the beginning. So yeah, zero on zero. So you're not caught, uh, but you're not inside and you're going to have to wait a little later, probably till the cover of darkness to try to come in. But Helena, you get inside. Uh, but by the time you get through, uh, one of the guards starts moving past and then, Decides to sort of stop and just like sit in the grass for a bit, smoke a cigarette, kind of go on break. And Hamill, you realize if you try to get in now, there's no way you wouldn't be detected. Uh, so you're just going to have to wait a little while until 
uh, the wolf so disappears. Hamill has this little like blade of grass that she's pulled that she's just like pulling apart into like a million little pieces, <laughs> just mm-hmm. like because she can't like run around in anxiety, but she's got to do something. So she's just like carrying this little just blade of grass, just to like a million little pieces. I feel like I, I feel like. I feel like you're becoming. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. You're gonna, like you got a little bit of like a drug addict problem. You're like, even yeah. all of them are just like, hey, hey, everything's fine. Everything's fine. No, I'm fine. Um, okay, so Chai, Cujo, McCloud, Helena, all four of you are inside. Uh, Helena, you probably conveyed to Hamill. Everyone else at Hamill is kind of stuck for a bit. So, are the four of you doing anything while we wait until the cover of darkness? Yeah, we'll have to come up with some sort of coffee situation. Yeah, so I was going to say, so they basically relayed everything they learned from mm-hmm. um, Ald- Aldrin. Okay. So you're going to so try, then, try to find a try to see if you have any coffee filters or coffee packs. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, go ahead and roll your scavenge. <laughs> uh, did you roll this? Okay, so we've got. Oh, sorry, I was in the wrong button. I don't know why it rolled three times. My bad. All right, so first one failed though. First one failed. Uh, you can push and re-roll everything. Uh, how would I push a custom roll just, like that? Would just I just roll do it again. again. Just roll again. And so we'll take the second one then, because you already did roll it twice. And so the right. second time, second time you did succeed. Uh, and so you do find uh, a pack of coffee, uh, kind of an individual pack of coffee. What kind of flavor is it? Ooh, we're gonna do like a nice. Um, uh, so it's. Uh, <laughs> It's I don't know brand, but we'll say it's a nice raspberry with uh, notes of hazelnut <laughs> okay. and um, Dunkin a little bit of chocolate. Fancy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. So hey, Folgers, if you want to sponsor the stream, you just call out and let us know. I'm happy to do that. Follow us on Twitter at Lollygagger. <laughs> at Lollygagger Coda. Here we go. Uh, the Lollygagger uh, Okay, so you do manage to get some coffee filters for sure. Um, now you have coffee filters. It's not yet sunset. Uh, Hamill's still stuck outside, but the four of you could still try to get in and see Gagarin at this point if you want. So I kind of relate to the group um, after hearing them the, the what they had the conversation with Aldrin on. I'll be like, <clears throat> you know, we can always uh, slip Gagarin a uh, sedation. Uh, this one, and I point to uh, Helena. Uh, she she can whip up all kinds of brews, uh, and it would be super simple. We would just have to deal with the guards at that point. But it, with Gagarin asleep or sedated, it would be like taking candy from a baby. Uh, so would you? I guess I assume you probably would have told them that you made a sedation potion. No, okay. she didn't. Okay. So like Helena just kind of like side eyes them, and she goes, "That might have perhaps been my plan to get into the gate if." Uh, little precious Hamill didn't come for me and um she's uh kind of like looks them over and goes I do only have one dose though that's all I had time for so then I look at Cujo and I'm like would you be able to handle two guards it would be tough but I've done it before it's only one, by the way. I'm not sure if I conveyed that properly there's one oh. guard outside and then you have to get past the guard and then the guard, if you do, the guard will literally escort you inside. Okay. So there's just the one. Oh, there's still I thought others. stuck inside. There's still others that are patrolling. So if there's a lot of noise, they're certainly going to come running. And you would imagine probably plenty of the other dogs and foxes and wolves here will also come running to help. Uh, but uh, so you do have to be a little careful. But there's only going to be one specific guard that you'll have to deal with. All right, just put him in a big headlock and choke off his windpipe, and he can't call for help. And that's only during the day, too. The guard's not there. Uh, like, you don't, there's fewer guards in one of the guards. So, like, you're not going to have guards at night in front of him. Would it's he still meet with us at nighttime? Probably not. For trade? Exactly. Yeah. Maybe you give him a little sample of this said coffee and slip in a little of the sedation, apparently, that can be made. Okay. And then we could sneak mm-hmm. back in later. That's a good plan. I mean, I doubt it acts immediately. Yeah. Uh, Too bad our little puppy is not the not the girl and not in heat, because then it would be very easy to get sneak inside. (laughs) Okay, so who is going to try to get in? Who is going to try? You can all go up at once if you want, but only one of you will. Would if you you're going to have to do a dominance check to get inside. 
Dominance is the thing that you're gonna be guys are gonna be doing a ton in this. Game. I have zero dominance skill whatsoever. I have three. Yeah, um, that's not my thing either. Okay. Inside so, the like the lodge or inside the meet him. Inside the cabin. Like, okay. Like because that's that was the plan. The plan was to go meet him, and then you were gonna like put the potion inside the coffee packet, and then mm-hmm. try to sell him the coffee packet. Is there any way I could sneak Hamill in with me? Is there any way he can hide on my body? That's small. Um, if you took, I'm, I'm still outside. So, yeah, oh, that's right. right. I forgot. Yeah if, yeah, if you guys go in now, I'm just ripping up grass. And then, if you wait until dark, when she can try to come in again, it'll be too late. Yeah, it'll be too late to talk. So, all right. I guess we I'm can always wait a day if we want. No, there's no time. All right. Okay, so the four of you go up to the to the gate then, or to the uh, to the guard uh, in front of the cabin. Is that right? I think, I'll hand the I think we're just going to be. Cujo. Yeah, I think I, I'm going to do my best to just get as much information, get the coffee, get the potion, um, if that's okay with everyone, and then kind of set up a rendezvous point near the broken um, patch of the fence um, that we're going to meet up in one to two hours when nightfall hits. So maybe less people will see us. I'm going to do my best to get inside, sedate. Um, maybe I know it's only one dose of sedation, so I have to choose either sedate the guard or sedate uh, Gagarin himself. Is there any way that we have any information on Gagarin about if he's a fighter, if he's big, if he's you know? McLeod, I, he... McLeod would know that most of the Boston Terriers are scavengers and they're okay. smaller and they're erotic and feisty, but they're not like particularly good at, at warriors. And... So yeah. the guard would probably be a bigger threat than Gagarin himself. Mm-hmm. And again, okay. you all you also know from Aldrin that, uh, and and also probably from McLeod that the the guard out in front of Gagarin's cabin isn't there all night. There are guards that that patrol all night, and there are guards that occupy the watchtowers all night. But the specific one on duty out in front of the cabin, they don't. They go to bed once sunset and business hours are done. And at that point, Gagarin is you know just locks windows and doors and doesn't really see anybody at that point. So then I wonder if it would be more advantageous to give the sedation to the guard, and then all you have to do is physically dominate uh, Gagarin, and then you could just knock his ass out so he can't cry for help for running away. But they wouldn't know anything went wrong if all the action happens on the inside. It's true. Do you think we'd try a trade first just to see this artifact come up? I doubt he's going to be willing to trade this artifact for some coffee. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's Isn't a it? very, very it's awesome. high profile. <laughs> One time use versus a multi use, yeah. All right, so I guess we're, I'm just, I'm heading in alone. Cut. Unless... Sorry about that. I was looking something up and I was getting some Windows pings. So for those listening. Uh, okay. Um, so are you putting the sedation poison? Are you like sprinkling that in the coffee packet first? Is this. Is this like a potion you need to drink? Is this something you can inhale? Is this something I can like? It's liquid, but like it's liquid. We're not gonna get to like like it's fine if you pour it over like the beans in the the ground beans. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I like it. it's creative. Um, or you can keep it separate and try to like give it to him in a different way. Like that's up to you. Yeah. Stab so, yeah. him with a dirty heroin needle full of it. All right. So Helena, are you gonna give me the the sedating potion? Oh, yeah. And then, Chai, are you giving me the coffee? It's my last bag, but you can have it. Okay. All right. So I guess I'm going to approach and then I guess talk to the guard. So, so you, you go up to the wolf, this tall, like kind of auburn colored wolf. You don't look like a traitor. Yeah, it eyes you up. Mm. No, I'm more of a fighter. And I recently defeated an opponent who had some very, very good smelling coffee. And in my travels i've heard this gagarin fellow loves him some coffee and i uh know he has some high high stakes artifacts that he may be willing to trade for them so i'm here to visit and possibly procure a deal maybe i don't know you look like you and how do we know it's not just a bunch of bird droppings you're trying to pass off i'm know. gonna open up the package and just kind of uh very very faintly 
peek it open and hold it up to this wolf's nose, which I know is very sensitive to smell. Okay. Just say, take a sniff for yourself. You sniff it. Mm. That sounds or smells doesn't sound it at all. <laughs> it's a crinkly bag kind of sound. <laughs> <laughs> smells good though. Um, and so I'll give you, you get a plus two modification for your rank. And then you get, I'll give you a plus one for having some, what looks to be real coffee. Uh, and the guard would certainly know that Kagarin loves his coffee. He sleeps with his coffee maker for crying out loud. So you get a plus three total. So go ahead and roll your dominance check. All right, this guy's bed this. is super full because he sleeps with the, the EMP. He sleeps with his coffee maker. <laughs> he doesn't sleep with the EMP. So- <laughs> That's just dangerous, Melissa. Come on. Yeah, only if you're electronic this time. Yeah, he doesn't want to ruin his coffee maker. Okay, it went through that time. So he's rolling since, and I failed. So he's like, oh, right. Now, no funny business when we go inside. And he holds up his club menacingly. If you make a racket, I'm going to hit you with this. And then (laughs) he uh, knocks on the door, opens it up, and he says, got to trade it with some coffee. And you hear from the inside, okay, okay. Uh, and so you open the door, and you come inside. Is this Tweak from South Park? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you, ever, you ever see the Plaza Terror with those big old buggy eyes? <laughs> this, they're crazy, man. They're they're absolutely crazy. Uh, so you you go inside, and you uh, and you can see that it's a kind of it's a decent place compared to where you live, anyway. Uh, there's this sort of short, black and yellow furred Boston Terror with these. Big old, really wide eyes. Like, not only is he a Boston Terry, but he's a Boston Terry on a lot of caffeine. Uh, and he's got like a thermos in his hand. <laughs> I already got coffee. Uh, and you can see he's got like a belt on and he's jingling because he's got some keys there. Uh, when you go into your left, you can see that there's two uh, rooms with, with doors that are kind of, kind of open, kind of not. And you can kind of peek in really quickly and you can see there's some trash scrap in there uh, right ahead there is a uh, there is another room that seems to have a door uh, and there's like a padlock on on the door itself and then off to your right uh, is where Gagarin came from you can see an unmade bed as you peek around uh, and that must be where he sleeps um, mm-hmm. <gasps> oh, let me see let me see let me see I'm uh, I'm gonna hold on to the bag itself and I'm just gonna kind of reach in my my claws and kind of just get a, a small, small pinch on them and hold it up, hold it up to Gagarin to kind of smell the aroma of this coffee and say, is this something you'd be interested in? Uh, maybe, maybe uh, a taste, maybe a taste, kind of a taste. <laughs> He's just, uh, he is a junkie. And I'm like, what do you have to trade if it's good? Well, what do you want? What do you want? I've got all things. Gagarin has everything, everything you can need. Oh, all those all those scavengers out there, uh, 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 losers compared to me. I got everything. What do you want? You want weapons? I've got weapons. Yeah. I'm a, oh. I'm a fighter. I'm looking for uh, some high-profile weapons. Mm, what do got, you have to trade? I've got weapons. I've got, I've got bats. Uh, uh, I've got sticks. Uh, 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 I've got hockey sticks and. Oh, uh, quit wasting my time. I'm going to I'm going to reach behind me and pull out my spiked club and my machete which have both two uh damage bonuses which pretty high profile as far as starting equipment goes. So mm-hmm. say I need something better than this and I'm just going to throw them both onto the table. I totally forgot you're not actually supposed to have weapons in here, but we're going to let it go cuz I oh. totally fuck. No, it's it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, you could just kill them. <laughs> so some made. extra bonuses to that dominate. <laughs> I got no, the weapons. You're not inside. supposed to have like weapons at all, even in the dog drive area. That's oh, okay. But whatever, we're letting it go. Uh, it's a it's a rowdier time in our in our jet lab alpha. Uh, he says, "Well, uh, what do you want? We got, we, 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 what kind of weapon are you, you looking for? Something with some range." We've got bows. I've got bows. You want a bow? I can get you a bow. Slingshots. If you want, you want slingshots, I can do that too. Bow. But I got a bow. Bow. Yeah. Bow. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start rolling up the the coffee bag and like say, you said you couldn't, or you you said you had stuff that other scavengers couldn't get me. Hmm. This is a waste of my time. And you're I'm not gonna, gonna start... find any bows out there. They can't deal with weapons. I'm the only one who can deal with weapons. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll my eyes and I'm gonna. I'm going to walk over to the coffee machine and I'm going to start preparing um, a very, very small cup of coffee that's untainted. It's not going to have anything in it. Um, basically an espresso. And I'm going to, I'm going to 
Okay. Roll a comprehend check to see if you know how to use a coffee maker. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, if you smash it, then maybe that'll work out in our favor. Nope. No. Are you going to push it? If you want. Push if you like. Oh, we lost Ashley's. Uh, oh. What happened there? Uh, I'm not sure. Got your, got your voice still, so we're good. Um, since push? this one's on, no, since this one's untainted, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get frustrated and tell him to, to make a small batch. I'm just gonna give him a very, very <laughs> small amount of the ground coffee for him to, uh, That's to, a good idea. to brew it. Okay. Am I back? So you go over, you start you're fiddling back. with it, and you're like, I don't know this. Yeah, you're good, Ashley. Uh, and, and he comes over and he slaps you first of all, like, how dare you touch Bessie? And then he comes over and he starts, he takes, he takes your, your little thing, he starts making it, and he's, uh, He's just sitting there, kind of rocking, waiting like the twenty minutes it takes for the coffee to brew. Uh, so, um, read any good books lately? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, eventually he drinks it. And he's like, "This is okay. It's fine. I, hmm, it's a bit of raspberry in there. Hmm, hmm. Not a common flavor when it comes to coffee. <laughs> Very curious whoever made this one. Uh, but." Uh, I'll give you a bow, and I'll give you nine arrows for this. Final offer. If you don't like it, then you can get out of my cabin. That's actually a pretty good trade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just trying to think of a way. <laughs> so what was... You... Um, sorry, go ahead. So what was... So in my surrounding area, you said there's pretty much a door that's padlocked. Um, his room that has a bed that a I bed can see. Bed and a desk and a table. Okay. And to my knowledge, I know he has this weapon. And, and what was McLeod's vision? Did it impact the uh, interaction between the middle? No, this was purely for oh, uh, part of it. Hamill. You also know that it's uh No, but he scried something, right? Isn't that, was he Lucky. using the... For Hamill's undetected. That was the scouting. We already, we already did. Oh. He already used the scry. We used the scry to get uh, to help Helena. Right, right. Or, sorry. Hamill, one of the two. There you go. I put you inside the cabin if you want to take a look. Oh, what? Where'd you go? Sorry, sorry. You can't. You can't go in there. That's the locker. <laughs> it's like, yes, I can. Um, uh, yeah. All right. Is so, that who's? Is that like a guard behind him? There's a guard. Well, there's Gagarin. Okay. Who's the? There's the Boston Terrier, and then there's a. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I look like a mouse because it's so small on my screen. Show. Let everyone see this really quickly. Yeah, so think about what it is that you want to do here. So, got Garen right here. Got a guard right here. So he's not a huge fan of the coffee. He hasn't really let me get any additional information from him. Um, I've only dominated the guard, so I can try and dominate Garen himself, correct? You can, yeah. Um, okay. I would say at this point, you're probably pretty confident that he's not going to just hand the, the EMP rifle over. Like, it's, right. It's not but at least I, I just want to try and maybe get some information. Maybe. Um, Did you spike the coffee or no? No, the, the, the batch I gave him was untainted, but I still have the coffee and the po- potion on me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can always, always you know, do like a salute. Yeah, doing good the, business. Um, so at this point, I'm just gonna I'm gonna roll dominate, uh, just to try and maybe get some extra pulling power for him to maybe make him look the other direction, possibly let him give me a little bit more freedom in his room to maybe look around. Uh, the you're talking about Gagarin? Yes. Okay, go ahead. You have a minus one for a modification for two to one. Uh, but also, let me check his rank because he's got decent rank. I think his rank is. If I can find it. I feel like we're actually heading for like a whole Princess Bride thing, but with coffee cups. Like that's where this is going to go. <laughs> I've been I've been seducing myself for years and years. Right? And don't, don't have an effect on me. Um. Yeah, he's got. He's got rank eight, so you have, oh, okay. a, you have a minus, Ooh, minus three, two, minus oh, three, three total because okay. you're outnumbered. All right, 
Let's try this. Nothing. As a fail. And at this point, he says, Either make the trade or get out. You're wasting my time. So I'm just going to ask him. I was like, let me take a look around. I want to see what kind of weapons you have. Uh, so he'll show you into the two southern rooms, but he will not let you into the padlock room. And you can see that there's plenty of different things in here. Plenty. Of, but uh, most of them, you know, melee weapons. There is one decent looking bow, uh, a little a couple arrows in a trash can uh, that are kind of being set aside. A couple knives, uh, both uh, cutlery and like actual like throwing knives and stuff. Um, but you don't see that you don't see the rifle. Okay, I'm gonna as I'm looking around, I'm gonna kind of flick the lock on the door and say, "So what's in? What do you got in here? Anything good?" And when you touch the lock, you can see that the guard uh, quickly intersperses himself between you and it, and kind of pushes you back. Not. Not any way that's going to do damage, but pushes you into the wall a bit. Uh, no good in there. Yeah, no, you can't go in there. You don't. You don't got anything good enough. Uh. Oh, some valuables then, huh? All right then, we'll do the bow. Okay. That'll give me some range. Okay. So I, at that point, um, I'm gonna basically say. Us Wolverines, when we make a deal, we like to have a toast. Do you have anything to drink? Mm. Uh, yes, I've got coffee. All right, how about a, a batch of this this coffee that I've brought you, then? No, uh, okay. Uh, uh, this is very traditional, but uh, uh, I approve. Uh, and so he, uh, he goes back into his room, uh, and you hear shuffling, and then he comes out with, like, two like coffee mugs one of them's got a big chip in it and it says uh, uh you know number one dad and, and the other one uh, just just says like i love new york on it uh and uh he uh he holds them out uh and uh, expecting you to pour uh, the coffee into the tube uh fuck <laughs> How am I gonna? How am I gonna po- poison this drink? Well, what is it while he was walking away to get the mugs? Yeah, at, at one point when he was leaving, I'm gonna do my best to try and. Okay, you you can roll a sneak test. I'll let you do a sneak test at a minus one mo- modification, just because of the close quarters uh, and the fact that you're kind of outnumbered in here. So sneak minus one to try to douse uh, douse the coffee. Wish me luck. Good luck. Ooh. All right. It's going to be versus uh, the Lodge Guard Scout. So let's see. And that is. <laughs> right. So, so <laughs> while he goes in, the there's a little like end table where he had set the coffee table down in the main hallway as you walked in. He uh like he he walks away. The lodge guard guy turns around really quick to make sure that the padlock that you were messing with isn't uh isn't is still kind of secure. And while you do that, you take the while he does that, you take the opportunity to quickly dump the potion uh, into the coffee make, coffee cup. And then when he comes back out, he holds the the two mugs up, and you pick up the the big the jar of coffee. Uh, and what do you do? Do you pour it in both cups at that point? Or you yeah. Take, you take it on for the team. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> as so. I don't. I mentioned this a little bit early, do, but do we ever find out how long this potion actually takes to work? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. How long is it actually? Um. It, well, it, when so when they take the drink, it's gonna inflict d6 points of confusion. Okay. If their okay. wits are lower to zero, then the victim falls asleep for d6 hours. Mm. If they're confused. You can convince them to open the vault. Okay. It, but I'm gonna be asleep too at this point, probably. Uh, so you 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 drink and then. Um, and he says, hmm, it tasted funny, but okay, whatever. And then you, uh, you exchange, he gives you a bow with nine arrows and you, uh, you are escorted back out. Yeah. I'm going to do my best to leave as quickly as possible. Okay. Go ahead and, uh, roll for roll D six. 
for near a, Logan. Said, is it just is it just one d six, Ashley? Did uh, you say? Yeah. Well, so one d six for the uh, confusion. Okay, so okay. go go ahead and roll one d six, Ashley. We'll have Ashley do it since it's her post. Okay. Damn. One. Okay. Is that for me or is that for? So that's, that's for you, for Garen. That's, that's yeah. Okay. And then I'll so roll. does that you take one point of confusion? Okay. One point to my wits. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Same just, thing. Confusion. Okay. And if it's confusion if it's okay, so if it's one? and if it's reduced to zero, then I'm asleep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Go out and then roll a d6 for Garen. Okay. <laughs> of course. Good roll. Of course. He's roll. wiped. Okay. Um, I'll say. Okay. Uh, so is he asleep? You guys don't know. You left. Uh, you're not sure. Um, I'll let. Okay. I'll let. On your way out, um, as the you and the guard are leaving, why don't you go ahead, uh, Cujo, and roll a scout test really quick? Uh, just with the trauma of applied. So like with the confusion applied. All right. Let's see if I can. I feel like I just have to hit modify and then done to kind of reflect. Uh, everything so I'm doing a scout right mm -hmm. Ugh. yeah yeah you, no. you, know, you didn't you didn't hear anything you don't we're not passing that but as you as you get over like in your and you meet up with everybody and you're like really kind of a little tired and it takes you a while to find the place but eventually you make it there still a little time before for for dark what now um, Somebody I'm gonna talk. else needs to go make a trade. <laughs> Somebody needs to sneak inside. Um, I'm going to give the group collectively. So has night fallen at this point when I'm leaving? It's getting close, but not quite. Kind of kind of dusky, but mm -hmm. not quite. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to meet up with everyone, give them the information I know. I'm going to hand my bow and arrows to Chai okay. um, so he can hold on to them. Um, let them know that he was not giving up any information about the gun at all. Um, he did have a locked room that they were very, very defensive of, um, and that I was able to slip the potion into the coffee, and he had many, many gulps of it. He seemed to enjoy it. Um, and he and likely then, had more than one helping, you would imagine, because you yeah. just had like a quick shot, but there was still yeah. more in the, in the pot, so he probably... I did, my, I did my best to seem like I wasn't hiding anything, mm -hmm. but I wasn't taking gulps of this coffee. And who knows, maybe he shared some with the guard for slapping you for touching the lock. Yeah. There's multiple servings. And so uh, so you get all that information, uh, and we'll say it's 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 dusk right now, and the guard's still outside the cabin when you peek over. You can either choose to go in now, or you can choose to to not and wait and wait for dusk. Or okay, no los dos. Could I scavenge for like a uh, like a newer coffee pot or something to like spice up his uh, coffee maker with? Sure, go ahead, and roll scavenge. All right, let's set. Do you have like a limit to how many times you can do this a day? Oh, I was looking at that. Um, and hold on, I have a page of my mind. Okay. Uh, actually, it says every time you need a particular item. So no, you don't. You can do this literally <laughs> any time yeah. you want. It's, it's, it's basically like if awesome. I lose my wagon, scavengers I have to, are OP. Uh, Scavenger is my favorite <laughs> of the classes. Like that was that was definitely my favorite. Okay. I saw rolling real quick. Go for it. Uh, uh sorry, I got the chat window in the front. Nothing. Uh you can push and just re-roll it. Yeah, I'll push. Go for it. Uh that's a success. Nice. Uh, and since so it's it has two, is it like a pretty decent quality? It increases no? it basically it means you can apply it and make it. Uh, a not a not just a one use item. You, if it's just a plain gotcha. success, it's a one use item. If not, whatever. with weapons, if you're looking for a weapon, then it can kind of increase uh, weapon damage or weapon bonus or range. Like one of those three things you can use to modify. It. All right, so then maybe we can like complement his coffee maker and get like a nice fringe press. I don't know anything about coffee, so I'm just like throwing out the words that I do know. We'll say it's, it's okay. Like I'm all I'm all out of it. I finished mine. <laughs> thing. I drink some before we do. Okay. Uh, all right, so you're you're gonna head over to the cabin now. Yeah. All right, McLeod, are you doing anything? Uh, if, if Garen says he doesn't want to trade this rifle for this coffee, what makes you think anything else you could give him will likely give him up? Darling, it seems like if it's we locked gave behind him a sedation potion, we right, just need to if, get back in to make sure he's sleeping, then take it. But just remember that the guard's going to go in with you, so you might be able. If, to, yeah. If there's a guard and it's locked behind this door, all we need is someone that can get through. 
Does anyone have a lock picking skill? There isn't one. Mm-mm. You gotta force it open. You gotta force it open. Strength. That's correct. Well, he's got. It was, that's not necessarily true. He had keys jingling on his waist. That's yes, correct. he did. So it's just basically like, is he asleep? Is the guard like with it? Because you said it causes confusion before sleep, if I understood correctly. Maybe perhaps uh, when you go inside with guard, uh, our lovely buff Cujo can knock on door and distract guard. <laughs> Maybe we <laughs> need to find a way to get Hamill inside now that the sun's setting and then sneak him in with uh, Chai so that maybe they could steal the keys. I'd be down to try that. Okay. So we're waiting for dark? Yeah, I guess... not still be sleeping at that point. I would like to remind you. It's not that long. How long long does he stay asleep? We Uh, we have to roll a d6. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Four hours. Hell yeah. So you would know that it's a fairly potent one, and if it's going to knock a person out, it's going to knock them out for a little while. Yeah, because I was angry when I made it. <laughs> and, I mean, Cujo is a little bit more you know, sturdier, has greater constitution, so to speak, uh, likely is able to withstand the effects a little bit better than this. He's just movie. yawning a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so Hamill. Finally, after like a good hour, this this wolf guy gets off his break, and you can go ahead and you can now make <laughs> another sneak test. Uh, but you don't have to negatively modify it anymore. Uh, so it's just a straight up roll. Goes. Would it be inappropriate for me to be brewing like alcohol right now? <laughs> in China? You're going to have to push that if you want to get in. A hamel. Sucks. She used all the good rolls earlier. I know. This is what happens. You would probably need some moonshining still and equipment. So it's probably something you would want to do oh Oh, no all right so after a little while like hamel like you just can't see her anymore does anybody want to go out and try to give her a hand Um, i'm like half asleep i'm just like mm -hmm. i'm just like chilling outside just kind of like how low did it make your wits go i'm at two that's what i was about to uh mcleod helena you want to or tchaikovsky you want to go try and fetch her Try and go find her and help her in or, or something. So what is it? Just sneak or? Yeah. yeah, it's just sneak. So. I'll try it at this point because. Yeah. So I did I have to take. try to scavenge something. Did I have to take two used. negative to my agility for that? No. You should have been back to normal. Let me roll that again. Sorry. Hit the wrong button. But I okay. push and I had two negatives. And. And so you would need to take, uh, you had a total of two. No, you only had one negative. So you take one more point of fatigue. I had one, I had a negative and then I pushed and then I got another negative no, on the push. No, you didn't. You got one total negative. Yeah. Okay. So I take one over. fatigue take for that. One, one fatigue. But, uh, as you, as you're trying to sneak in a guard patrolling around on the inside sees you trying to come, you know, trying to, to come in like, what are you doing? You little, you little snake or, um, uh, Weasel, Martins, uh, I don't know what you are, but get the hell away from the fence. And so, uh, yeah, you go disappearing into the darkness. Or I else. do. Who's going to get her? Or are you trying to accomplish this without her? Um, Who says that she needs to go back through the hole? Can't she just go back through the entrance? She, can, she, she never did try. She can try to climb. Uh, the fence, that's a thing that she could potentially do. She could try to, at this point with it getting dark, uh, it's not really so much, she's not really going to be let in, but she can. we can say that she tries to get in through the front gate again if she wants to try to go dominate uh, her way inside. Well, that's the thing. is like front guards actually never saw her because she snuck in, so she could just be like, hey, I came back from hunting. I've got some like meat to trade or whatever. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, I think she could, if, she, if you want, you could try to just go in the front. Okay. All right. What's your rank? Uh, four. All right. No, no plus, no minus. They're also four. Uh, so just roll a dominate check versus <laughs> their sense of motion. They don't have any skill in sense of motion. So I have no skills in dominate. Rule of fates plays. All right. I got a, I got a success and two fails. So what do you got? Dominate. This is second. Oh, Melissa. No. 
right. He used all her good rolls. You, you don't take any of that because you can't really push because you have no dice to re-roll. And so yeah. as you come up and you're like, hey, hey, can I go outside? Or whatever it is that you say, is like, get out of here, you rats. Or whatever you are. And they kick at you and they miss and you scamper away again. I'm going to try to be loud about getting kicked out just to see if maybe if the others are around somewhere, they might see that I'm getting kicked out and like I'm not successful at getting back in. Uh, sure, sure. And I would say the rest of you are abund- are abundantly certain she's just she's not getting in like she, unless, you know, she's nearly gotten attacked multiple times by the guards. If she gets it, if she gets caught one more time trying to come in mcleod you know that that gallows isn't there for for no reason that's not just decoration so i'm gonna be loud crying about how hungry i am (laughs) and just (laughs) making a sad sack scene so you're gonna have to do this without her so what what do you want to do i didn't see this coming at all i i saw her going once but i didn't expect her to leave again we're gonna have to go without her. Someone. All right. So you go over to the cabin. It's dark. You see the wolf guard open the door and yell for Gagarin, and he's like, uh, "I'm out of here. Good night, Gagarin." And then you listen closely, those of you who aren't confused, and you don't hear any response. And you he closes the door and he starts stomping away. Uh, that lazy good for nothing already asleep uh. and you see him kind of disappear into the darkness uh, as he goes off shift and so now the cabin uh, is void of a guard uh, but you're not entirely sure how to get in all the there's from from the eastern side uh, which is like the main view of the cabin there's a couple windows but those are boarded up and from the southern side boarded up haven't checked the back but uh everything kind of seems fairly boarded up you said that this place is kind of a shithole is there like any holes in like the side of the building or any like spots on the roof that might have damaged like just basically like yeah an opening so as you uh as you kind of start sauntering around the cabin you do notice that there is one window on the southwest side that is slightly ajar and that might be able uh, to let somebody of relatively small, like not, nothing, no one huge, no no bear is probably getting in here unless they force it open. But this one definitely, the southwest corner definitely has a window that seems capable of accessing. Um, who would be doing that? Someone that knows how to climb. Probably not Cujo, definitely not Hamill. So it's probably one of the three of you. It's not so much climbing, like there's no climb that you have to roll. It's more yeah. like sneak or force, depending on what you're trying to do. I have a zero in sneak, so I'm out. I suck at both. But a sneak based in its uh, agility. I've got a four in agility, but I'd have no bonuses. Sneak, sneak is based in agility, yes. Yeah. Window that needs to be breached and a cat. I think that yeah, works I'm like, together. that looks like that's me. <laughs> okay. Um Oh God! Should I hand you the French press in case the guard still like? You could always be like the oh, I'm his mistress type thing, and I brought him a present. I don't, I don't know. I'm just. Uh... I'm a cat. I don't think that would cross species kind of romance. Uh, I guess that's maybe true. that's why you have to sneak in after hours. <laughs> yeah, it's a forbidden love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead and roll a sneak, uh, Helena, if you're going to be the one trying to to sneak into this uh, in this cabin at night. That's a success. Uh, I'm going to roll again a quick scout. See if they hear anything. And again. Well. Okay. uh, You're good. Um, That's an automatic thing, by the way. Sneak and scout. That's a that's always an opposed roll. Um, Okay. so I was just wondering if my tail, uh, my animal power affects it. Oh, like a modifier? Yeah. Uh, rem- remind me of that next time. I would have to spend a feral point, though, so I didn't. So it's okay. okay. So you hop inside, and uh, you are in a room filled with trash. It is a hoarder's dream. Uh, the door uh, is to your left, slightly ajar. Um, if you listen closely, you can hear. <laughs> It's 
the sound of a dog sleeping somewhere in a different room. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, there's all sorts of things in here. Some of, if you had time, maybe you could, I mean, but like, there's so much trash. It's just like a hoarder, hoarder's dream. Mm-hmm. Um, you were told, I mean, Kudra gave you kind of the lay of the land. And so you're in one of the kind of two open rooms that had trash. Uh, but then there's another room that you remember he said had a padlock on it. Uh, as you step out of this room, you can see that that room with the padlock is, to, is immediately to your left and the door going out of the cabin is to the right. And you can see, like, draped in awkward fashion, like, with his feet up on the bed and his head on the ground. And you can see the coffee, uh, the coffee pot on the ground itself as well. And a couple hours old stain of coffee on the ground. You see Gagarin sleeping. He didn't quite make it all the way to his bed when he got drowsy. What would you like to do? Um, well, Kuju told me about the keys, so I'm going to look for the keys. You can see that they are attached to his belt, laying on the ground. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go for him. All right, go ahead. And, uh, because he's knocked out, you can walk right up and take him. Okay. I'm just going nice. to let you, I'm not even going to require a skill check because he is not just sleeping. He is like knocked out. Yeah. So he is comatose for a while. And so you go and you pick them up. And you have the keys. You go over to the padlock, start fiddling it. You find the correct key, open it up. And inside is a, is a smaller closet, far more organized. And there's all sorts of amazing things in here, some of which you don't really recognize them. But there's a lot of things. And there's things you can grab and bring with you. There's also, uh, you can see on one of a sh- on a shelf, kind of, very neatly uh neatly laid out carefully is a strange looking rifle you've seen rifles before but this one's different this one is chrome shiny like it's well kept um doesn't seem to have any clear way of loading bullets like you saw the revolver that Truffaut had but there's nothing mm-hmm. like that here and you're pretty positive that that's probably what it was described to you uh so you grab that do you yep. want do you want to spend any more time seeing if there's anything valuable in here or anywhere else in the cabin? Um about how long has it been since uh Cujo came back? You probably got you, you would you would probably say he'll probably be out for another hour or two. You got a little bit of time. Um she'll just do a quick glance and maybe grab something that looks most interesting to her. Okay. Uh, all right. So you notice that there is an interesting, uh, sitting on the same shelf as the, the rifle. There is this small metallic ball uh, that you think is easy enough to, to grab. And so you pick that up and sort of chuck it in your pocket. Um, you see like on a different shelf, this, this kind of almost like a gun. It's like this plastic thing. And it's got uh-huh. this really big, like, horn at the end, uh, like, where something... So if you pick it up, maybe you can shoot people with it. You don't know what kind of weapons go into it or what kind of ammo goes into it. And so you grab that. Um, there's these big... There's, like, skis and stuff. They're like, there's, that's just going to be too much of a pain in the ass to get out of here. So you probably ignore that. Yeah. Um, you see um, on a shelf underneath the uh, the rifle, there's this other really interesting piece of, of technology. Uh, you're not really sure it is. Maybe Tchaikovsky... Uh, could lend a hand in, in comprehending it, uh, but again, it's it's fairly small. You can kind of pick it up, and like there's a little there's a little cloth strap that you can kind of slide your your fingers underneath it, and you kind of pick that up uh, and put that in there. Well, and then you see uh, a helmet uh, that kind of looks like it would go well with the uh, mask that your friend Cujo wears, and kind of grab those couple of things uh, as best you can. And I'm going to need you to make a sneak roll to get out. Okay. So long beneficence hail increases balance. Uh, activate this power when rolling move to jump, climb, or perform any acrobatic action that requires balance. Um, I'll give you a plus one modification for it just because you're carrying extra gear now, and that's a little bit of modification there. So, okay. so I'll say you can have plus one for your town. Use your town. Like for that. now. We're not going to make that a regular thing. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, uh, no. You're going to have to push that. 
Yay. Okay, so you're going to take one point of fatigue. <sighs> so take okay. one point of fatigue. Worth it. And then That's I, a lot of successes. I will. I mean, I can't possibly. I can, the most I can do is like two, so you're good. Uh, or three, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, and that sense of motion. I, I rolled wrong. For every for every extra success. Oh yeah, that's mostly. In this case, the extra successes aren't going to help her here, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so you take your fatigue, you leave, you re, re regroup with everybody else. Kujo is still a little bit kind of tipsy. Do you all stay here for the night, or do you leave? I think Kujo should stay for the night, and the rest of us leave. Knowing, okay. Oh, I live here. That's what I got to say. I yeah. ask uh, Helen. I'm like, did you lock everything up that we found it. This, this is of a paranoid course, man. Obviously. Yeah. All right, McLeod. You would probably suspect that Gagarin, Gagarin being a very um, paranoid person, he's probably the type of guy. And and Tchaikovsky, being a scavenger, you know that you you regularly check your collection. So at some point he's going to check it and he's going to yeah, know right. it's missing. And if you Maybe. all are, it's just how far away we'll be. Yeah. So uh, there is a risk perhaps to staying here. If I you, vote GTFO. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, we can always load Kujo up in my wagon and I can pull him. <laughs> I'm not that dead. Yeah. <laughs> I only took one point. He's just a little, <laughs> he's just like a little drowsy. That's all. Yeah. All right. Uh, so eventually, so eventually you all, Get out and there, and you can leave just fine. They're not going to give you shit for leaving. Um, and so you leave, and some of some of them are like, yeah, get out, and the others are like, eh, looking at kind of strangely at McLeod. Do you do you go together or do you kind of do the one by one type of thing? Separate, of course. You do like the we don't know yeah, we don't know separate. these guys. Yeah. You do like the Ocean's Eleven thing where you're just kind of all looking at the market <laughs> yeah. one by one as the song plays. <laughs> leave. Okay, so eventually you all get out. You meet up. Hamill comes, tr- you know, come some hopping over and i've been laying in like again there's just this little pile of like mowed grass there's, yeah there's just basically <laughs> a dirt patch in a field of grass yes yep yep exactly uh hamill roll a, a scout test uh just for to, to get back to the the helicopter it's navigating in the dark ringo is staying i have more more stuff to do and this one was very mean to me and I don't really feel like traveling with him right now. I cannot be held accountable for what I might do to him. All right, so your success. So yeah, it's a, again, it's about an hour and an hour and a half trek back. Uh, it's a little more dangerous at night, but you um, you managed to get back uh, because, and, and fortunately you're well away from the lodge by the time that Gagarin wakes, you know, wakes up and, and starts looking at this morning sweep. So you reach, you make it back to the helicopter and you're able to kind of hand over the rifle. We'll play that out next week. Um, but we're going to stop there. Uh, but before we before we finish up for the night, uh, we're going to do a quick strategic turn uh, so that I can sort of prep uh, what I'm doing next week. Um, so a strategic turn really quickly. This should only, hopefully only take about five minutes, actually, I think. We'll see. Um, no worries. I don't have to be at work at three, so. Okay. If cool. you want to play it out, we can play it out. Uh, it's however long people want to keep playing. Is anybody in a ru- in a rush to leave? No, I gotta be off in like uh, another fifteen minutes. Okay, sure, yeah. So like, we'll say we'll say you make it back, um, and we'll play out the scene where you kind of talk over like the EMP rifle next week. Uh, but let's do the strategic turn though. I think okay. we, we can get this. Sounds good. We can do that in fifteen minutes. Uh, so if if you all want to check on the on the journal section of Handouts. roll 20, there is a strategic turns primer. Uh, and then there is also a resistance sheet. So strategic turns, you guys are part of the inner circle of the resistance and having been, having been successful on this very important initial mission, um, that's definitely going to reward the faith that Truffaut has that put in you, uh, which means you're going to be able to have a say in how the various cells, other cells besides your own are being distributed around the valley to try to complete various missions. Um, so whenever we play a strategic turn, and we're not going to do this every week, we'll do this probably every couple of sessions or show, so because a strategic turn, basically it takes like a month. So over the course of the next month, this kind of stuff is happening. You guys are also going on a mission, etc. cetera. Um, so you all get to figure out where do you want to send your the cells of the resistance 
and what operations do you want them to perform? And very and so you can see on the strategic terms primer that there's a variety of operations. There's things like spreading the word, uh, which has the benefit of increasing insurgency level. The higher the insurgency level of a habitat, the more likely they're going to uh, want to rebel and the more likely they're going to be successful on various tasks within that habitat. Uh, there's also population. The higher the population, the more cells that you could potentially recruit in that in that habitat. Um, so if you if you look at the resistance sheet, um, you can see what the starting point is for each of the tribes. So the dog tribe, for instance, has there's about 200 dogs and foxes and wolves, uh, but they only have an insurgency rating of five, which means they are not likely to be receptive to rebellious acts. And there's going to be negative modifiers to whether or not they're successful in their tasks. Um, the ape tribe has an 180 population with an insurgency of 45, which is a decent amount of insurgency, but not not crazy yet. The cat tribe, similar to the dogs, very low, not yet willing to do anything. Um, and you can also see, if you skip down, the reptile tribe and the badger tribe both have one cell. So currently, the resistance has three total cells that are operating. One is you guys, and those are the ones that we play out. And then the other two NPC cells, one is from the reptile tribe, and one is from the badger tribe. Now, cells function better, like the NPC cells function better when they do operations within their own habitat. So that's not, that's not to say that you can't take the reptile cell and send it to the cat habitat. You totally can. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, but there is a penalty, like there's a negative modification to the role, basically. Let's just put it that way. Um, so there's there's pluses and minus. Over the course of the game, what you're trying to do is you're trying to increase insurgency level to make more and more try because you're you're the resistance, right? You're trying to increase the 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 presence of the resistance throughout the valley. You want to make everybody else in the valley more willing to rebel against the watchers because that's the only way you're going to be successful. And you, you want to recruit more cells so that you can uh, make sure that you can send more out to do to do more things. You're recruiting more more actions and more cells to do to do operations. Um, a cell requires 50 population to be effective, and if a the population level of a habitat ever drops so low that it can no longer support the cell, the cell will automatically dissolve. Also. I am sending out various watcher missions. So I'm sending out like drones and sentinels and things like that to do various things. And what we do is you all talk about what you want and where you want to send people. And then you you tell me and I'll reveal what I have already done. I've already recorded mine. It's ready to go. And then we reveal them at the same time live on air. We roll some dice to determine the outcome of the various operations that we have assigned uh, our, our, our resources to. Does that make sense? like the general gist of it. Yeah. So in the strategic turns primer, you can see the different types of operations that you can send your cells on. So spreading the word, demonstration, purge, recruitment, disinformation, reconnaissance, pinpoint attack, sabotage, and assault. There's a basic description. The success chance is the starting point of how many base dice you roll or base die you roll, uh, to see if that cell is successful at their operation. That, however, is going to be modified based upon things like, is this cell operating in its own habitat? If so, you're okay. If they're operating somewhere else, then that's gonna have a hit. So there's gonna we're gonna take away some of those dice or some of those die. Uh, then, is it dice? Dice, yeah, dice is plural. Uh, and then if you're sending cells into habitats to perform operations where I have sent my watchers uh, to do operations, I have a set negative that might happen as well. So it might like also reduce the success chance. So where it says success chance, that's the starting point for how many base dice you roll to see if that operation was successful. And all you need to make it successful is one success on the roll. But again, those numbers will go down based on other factors. And you won't know how many because you guys do, do not know until we reveal at the same time where my where I sent my stuff. The danger column is how many gear dice that you have to roll 
when you roll to see if the mission was successful. If any gear dice show up as a six, and so for gear dice, it'll be like a little explosion, then the cell, whilst they, they are destroyed, they're killed or captured. If you rolled successes on your gear dice, or excuse me, successes on your regular base dice, but if you rolled explosions on your on your gear dice, they're still successful at their operation, but they died in the process of doing it. So it's like a rogue one type of situation. Spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of how that works. And then you can see the effect. So the effect tells you what happens. Um, so it kind of capacity, if you, if you see the thing that says capacity, that's for me. So that's like reducing the amount of sentinels and uh, and drones that I can send out because I have a specific capacity. You guys are not allowed to know that. And over the course of the game, various operations that you guys will send your people out on uh, will decrease my capacity and reduce my ability to send out overwhelming force to different places around the valley. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then what you all need to talk out and think and, and decide right now, live on air. You have three cells, including yourselves. You pick where you're going, and that's going to let me, and since we're doing it at the end, I want to try to do this at the end of the session so that then I can better prepare for next session for you guys, building a mission that we will play out much like we just played this rifle one out uh, based upon where you sent yourself. So you guys get to dictate mm. which habitat we go to and what you're trying so to accomplish. each cell someplace. Yes, so you okay. pick yourselves. And then you pick where those other two things, and not only, and you, you pick which habitat are they going to, and what are they trying to accomplish. You can also send the same. You can also send two cells to try to accomplish one task to get bonuses, uh, but you can't have like, um, like there's. I think you get if you, you can send, you can send two cells to the same habitat to perform the same operation, but you can't have two operations in one habitat. Does that make sense? Okay. Oh, so you couldn't have like two different ones in the same place. Gotcha. Correct. Correct. So the reptile, if you send the reptile and the badgers to, you know, to the bear tribe and you want to have them perform a ha- an operation there, that's fine. But they're performing the same one, which means yeah. they're going to get a bonus uh, to doing so. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Talk it out. Look through them. Talk it out on stream so people can hear like, what are you thinking about and what do you want to do? And if you have questions, sh- shoot them out. All in so, favor of an all-out assault on the dog tribe. <laughs> just cells, wipe them out the map. <laughs> large-scale attack <laughs> against the loyalists. So I'm thinking that our cell should go and spread the word in the Badger tribe since they just got attacked by watchers. Like Now would be the time to rally some to our cause and bolster it. And then I think the reptiles and badgers should both do disinformation since a pulse rifle was just stolen. Like we got to say like, no, I, I saw someone traveling on a road with like a strange metallic object and they went to the ape islands to hide. You know, that's my thought. I think uh, since there's a, there's a higher success chance if they stay within their own. So oh, I think, true. So I think we just have the badgers do that in the badger tribe and the yeah. reptiles do that in the reptile tribe. And then maybe since we're already close to the dog tribe, we can try and like spread the word or do some demonstration to try and up their insurgency count since it's already so low. And I think we, have... we should get away from the dog tribe for yeah. Well. Yeah. What if we do we like a what if we do a sabotage? We can like destroy a watcher lawyer just uh, infrastructure since we just got the railgun. Now we can like fight these dudes. True. So you're saying I we could thinking... sabotage something mm. in the dog tribe then? No, it doesn't have to be a dog no. tribe. It can be any, a different tribe. Okay. I think we should go to the ape tribe. And then possibly we could send the reptiles to recruit with the rats or the rabbits because they have a decent insurgency rating, yeah, but they don't I have think, any cells. I think, yeah, ape and rabbit would be good targets just for they saw their high insurgency and lack yeah. of cells. We can usually But I think we should send the easily. reptile to either, either of them because they don't eat meat. And do badger, badgers eat meat, do they, right? Oh, yeah. So badgers then love badgers... Meat within their own tribe could either do a, a recruitment or I think they should do some sort of disinformation. I, I definitely, definitely agree with the disinformation. Least, yeah, at least one disinformation so that in case we're trying to be hunted or tracked down, it's going to be more difficult. Yeah, I agree with that. So we'll do disinformation for badgers. Okay, so ba- I'm, I'm, I'm recording this. So badgers, are, you're going to do disinformation in their, in their own habitat, right? Yeah, their own habitat. Okay. All right. What about the reptiles? 
Um, did you guys want to send them to recruit or no? I mean, they already have a cell. I don't mean within their own thing. I think we oh. should send them somewhere else. Like okay. either the rabbits or the I think the recruitment's a good idea. Populations it's... populations can support multiple cells, but remember it's 50 population per cell. So Right. So you can you can always have more cells than one in in a, in a habitat. But the cats would be yeah. one of the two cells. Yeah, I don't think we should send it to the cat. I think we no, should No, no, I, yeah, I was just rat. Yeah, I was just following the I think, yeah, if we can establish a cell in the rabbit tribe with the high insurgency, they might be a really easy and early uh, tribe to really boost our numbers up. Yeah. So I think recruiting there is a good idea. Okay, so you're sending the reptiles to the cats to recruit? No, to the rabbits. Rabbits, oh, yeah. Oh, so the rabbits. Okay, so the reptiles are going to rabbits? Yep. To recruit. To recruit. Is there some somewhere in the book somewhere where it talks about like who doesn't like who? So we're avoiding sending somewhere where Yeah, as long not. as the uh, cats that doesn't up. actually have any sort of mechanical effect in this situation, but yeah. role playing wise, badgers and reptiles don't get along great. And then rats and cats are basically warring. Like they're yeah. so those are the ones that are those are the big ones. Okay. So reptiles are recruiting in the cat habit or rabbit habit. And rabbit. Okay, I've got it. Rabbit habit. And where do you and all want to go? We want to go to the ape tribe. Well, yeah, and were we going to do sabotage, like Long said? Well, if um, their insurgency rating is high, why would we go? Wait, we're just trying to establish a cell there. Is that what it is? No, we go there? you wanted you wanted to sabotage. So, yeah. sabotaging it'd be good for a place with relatively low insurgency and relatively high capacity. You don't know the capacity. Capacity is, is something you don't know. Capacity is basically my troops. Like, what do I have? And you guys don't yeah. know that. That's a hidden piece of information from you guys. Okay. So I think we should try and do reconnaissance. Oh, yeah, and see where they're looking for us or looking yeah. for the pulse rifle. That's actually a pretty good idea. Not only are we spreading disinformation, we're trying to find out some of our own. Yeah. I like that. And then maybe we can, then we can do some sabotaging or attacks next next yeah. time yeah. once yeah. we get some more information okay so you guys are doing reconnaissance mission in what habitat you want to do apes ape okay so i've got reptiles recruiting in the rabbits badgers are doing disinformation in their home in their home habitat yep and then can you, you bring all... up the habitat map again uh, maybe yeah. like yeah. the distance we have to travel from the dog habitat does that matter uh I mean, it's going to matter for you all just in terms of like random encounters and stuff that could potentially happen. Apes really not far at all. I was about to say, if it was an apes, hour from the helicopter yeah. to dogs, that's like three hours. So apes. Apes are relatively centralized. So hmm. rabbits are way off. Nice. I could be slightly off of that hour thing. It might have been like four hours. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to double check that. Uh, okay. So the, so the, so before we reveal, uh, Every the start at the start of every strategic turn, um, every single tribe is going to immediately go up in insurgency. Okay, so they all of them get a one d six roll. Um, there are things that you can do that can modify that later based upon certain you know certain missions and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Logan, why don't you roll two d sixes? This will be for the apes and for the badgers. So go ahead and roll two d sixes. So the apes go up by two, um, and then the badgers will go up by one. Uh, Ashley, do cats roll a d6 for cats? Cats will go up by six. Why did uh, you say the badgers went up by one? Uh, I I meant five. Sorry, I, I type okay. I type five. Don't worry. Uh, okay, I, I type five. Um, just making sure. Uh, long, go ahead and roll for the dogs. Wow, nice, very nice, nice. Guys. Let's double check something really quick. I just want to make sure it's two. It's one d six and not two d six. Yeah, it's one d six. Okay. Uh, so bears and reptiles go for that. Um, Derek. Two d six then. Yeah, roll two d six. One for the bear, one for the reptile. Oof. Okay, so bears are one. Surgeon. So this is insurgency rating, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then Melissa will roll two d six. One for the rabbits and one for the rats. All right, so I got that recorded. So I'm putting this in the resistance sheet. Hang on, I'm gonna save that really quick. Okay, so then I'm gonna reveal to you, and I've already had this ready to go. Melissa can 
And so like, I'm not allowed to know what you guys are doing and then change what I'm doing. That's cheating. So I've already, uh, but you live in the same house. So she could be, you know, bamboo. <laughs> she wouldn't. I mean, no, I know. I'm showing, <laughs> I'm showing you what I did. So you all, you all should see it. So I sent a raid, uh, to the ape tribes. Where is this? Oh. So I should have, you should, I should now see it. I hit, I hit the show button. Did anyone, can you see it now? Where at? It should just popped up in roll 20. I'm going to refresh in roll 20. I haven't got, I haven't got seen anything yet. All right, one sec. At least unless it's something really small on the map that I'm just not picking up on. How about now? There it is. Oh, wait, there, there it is. is. Okay. okay. So that's what I, I did. So uh, <laughs> so basically I sent a raid uh, on, oh, God. on the ape tribes. Okay. Uh, I I sent a reconnaissance team to the rat tribes. I sent a massacre to the rabbit tribe. Oh, Jesus, oh, son of a bitch! I sent Is it because they breed so. Fast? I mean, they they, they can take <laughs> that's, it. That's true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, I sent some patrols to the reptile tribe, and I sent some roadblocks to the to them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to resolve everything. Um. Mm. So. So basically what we've now done is we've done the insurgency phase, which is all those D6s that you rolled. We've done the planning <laughs> phase. And so now we're on to the execution phase. So all of us, so you all revealed your your plans for, for cell operations. I revealed my plans for watcher operations. So first what we do is we resolve all resistance operations. And some of those are going to take into account what happened by the watchers. Uh, so... Um, Begin. It'll start with the reptiles. So the reptiles were recruiting in the rabbit habitat, uh, but there were patrols. Or excuse me, there was a massacre going on uh, in the rabbit uh, habitat. So what this means? Let me see if this actually affects you at all. So. So you resolve all res all resistance operations one habit at a time, taking into account watcher operations, um, operations that are not carried out. So for an operation to succeed, the players need to roll at least one. The chance of su success of the operation tells you the number of base dice to roll. The chance is modified by the insurgency rating in the habitat. So what's the insurgency rating in the rabbit habitat? 65. 65. So there's a plus one. So they're at, now they're up to 11. Uh, then any watcher operations being carried out in the, in the same habitat in this turn. Uh, and then, but, but either though I'm doing something, it's actually not going to affect you guys because nice. the massacre is just decreasing insurgency and decreasing population. It's not about, there's no chance of success, negative modifier. Okay. You didn't send any additional cells to help the operation. Um, so pretty sure that means that you all just go ahead and roll 11 base dice who wants to do it uh you're a reptile uh derek so why don't you go ahead and roll it roll 11 uh, roll 11 d6 oh mine only goes to, uh you can roll in two ways it's fine yeah, yeah, yeah i'm gonna there we go and you got one success holy shit oh <sighs> It's that's successful. all you needed, though. That's, that's all you need. Yeah, just a phase. Minutes, so. I didn't think it was going to be. I was, I was hoping for Holes. bonus successes. <laughs> all right. So since you all were doing, um, you all were doing recruiting. So the uh, recruitment also requires a danger roll. So one, one roll, one more d6, and this can't okay. be a one. If it's a one, your cell dies. Oh, no pressure. Okay. Ooh, that was a little nerve wracking. All right. <laughs> So, uh, so they were successful, uh, and so that means you gained one, one cell in the rabbit mm -hmm. tribe. Hell yeah! Okay, but now um, we'll also do uh, my. So I have minus two d six population and minus two d six insurgency. So, uh, Melissa, can you roll two d six for insurgency? And Ashley, can you roll for population, please? All right, so this is the rabbits. So Melissa ruled, I said, for in insurgency. Yep. So minus three insurgency for Melissa. And then... Population, we killed seven. Minus seven population, so I killed seven rabbits. Okay, 
So the next thing uh, for you all is the Badgers. So the Badgers, uh, we're trying to do disinformation, uh, which has a base chance of success. By the way, fuck, you got, I'm sorry. You got to re-roll your success chances. You should have only rolled seven. Uh, actually, let's count the first seven. Was your success in the first seven? It was the third one. Yeah, yeah. Seven, okay. yeah. you're good. You're good because recruitment has a success chance of six. Sorry. Okay, so you are trying to do disinformation in the Badger habitat with the Badgers. So that's 10. Um, do you want me to roll that? And then let's see. So then there's a couple modifications here. So looks like it just increases the chance of success plus two to one operation in any habitat. In the yeah. Next th- and this is their own tribe. So you guys, you guys actually would have only rolled six dice for the recruitment one, but you still succeeded. That's fine. And yeah. then this new one, it's in their own tribe. So they're good. Um, so there's no no danger there. So we'll go ahead and roll 10 D6 Logan. Rip. And that is a unsuccessful. Oh. Did you get enough ones? <laughs> all right. Get them all out of the way. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's the end of the session, though. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, maybe there's another roll coming out. And Melissa, can you roll for my insurgency? So roll 1 D6 to see how those roll, roadblocks worked out. All right. Not well. Minus one insurgency. Okay, cool. And then the last one, the last PC one is you guys. So we don't roll. We we yeah. actually play that out. And so now we just have to finish up the watcher turns. Yep. So uh, let's see. Long, can you roll 2d6 for my raid on the apes? All right. So minus eight population an ape habitat insurgency insurgency uh let's see yep thank you okay and then um let's see uh ashley can you um let's see the rat tribe's not going to actually do anything because there's no that's just chance of success. So I sent reconnaissance there. That just reduces chance of success and increases danger, but no one did anything in the rat tribe. So we're good there. Rabbits, we already did. Uh, reptiles, we already did. And badger. badger. We already did. So that's everything, right? Mm-hmm. Did I miss yep. anything? Okay. Nope. Nice. Okay. So that is the end of round mm. one. I will update the sheets uh, for everybody. And uh, yeah, I'm so excited we got that pulse rifle. We did EMP rifle. Yeah, I don't. No, wanna... Hamilton didn't, but everybody else did. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> wanna... I don't want to get you guys too excited. Like you're not going to be able to keep it. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Oh well, no, but That's, I mean, it was a good start to like a mission. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was mission. worried about you guys, but I really like the whole. Uh... <laughs> Whoa! What the hell is that? Uh, I really like the whole uh, poison the uh, the coffee thing. That was pretty. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I think we're going to go ahead and end the stream. Pause. We got to do XP. Oh, yeah. we can do XP. Ooh, yeah, we can good do call. Okay, let's do XP. We can do it on air. All right, so then I put up a little reminder, XP and rank rewards. So so when you get XP in this game, at the very end of the session, I ask a bunch of questions. And if you can answer yes for everyone that you answer yes to, you gain an XP. So all of you did participate in the session. That's the first question. So all of you get one XP from that. Did you sacrifice or risk something for your tribe? Mm. I sacrificed a banana. Oh my god! <laughs> and some coffee. I don't know. And some coffee. I man, losing grub. I don't know. I wouldn't say for any of our tribes. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. S- I don't see it either. Uh, for the resistance, did you sacrifice or risk something to resistance? Um, our lives. I'm gonna give you all plus one for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You guys did a, a stealthy operation, try and steal stuff in the lodge like that. So plus one for everybody. Uh, did you sacrifice or risk something for your PC buddy? Uh, who's so? Let's go around the horn. Hamill, uh, who's your PC buddy? Chai. Oh, okay. Did you sacrifice anything for Chai? No. Or risk? I mean, my, I mean, my dignity. She, <laughs> she did give me grub, which we never. <laughs> by the way, how did that work? I just realized because I'm at zero grub. So. Yeah, me too. Uh, why don't you just split it? One of you, actually, the three of you split it. So each of you, so you take two, Ashley take two, gotcha. and then Hamill can take two. Okay, we'll figure it out later. I had eight, so I'll have some extra. Okay, you can work that off here. Um, uh, Logan, who's your buddy? Uh, Helena. 
Did you do anything for Helena? Did you risk or sacrifice? She did uh, bust open the fence for me. Yeah, I'm gonna give you that. That's true. That makes sense. Plus one, plus one. Uh, Sacrifice. uh, So, how about um, Ashley? Who's your Who's your buddy? Mine's Cujo. Uh, Did you sacrifice? Uh, I'm not sure if I'd say I I gave him. I I poisoned him with sedation. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you risked that though. I think he was doing that. Long. Who's your buddy? Uh, Cujo as well. I didn't risk anything. Just, okay, uh, then Derek. Chai, who's your buddy? Mine is uh, McLeod. I didn't risk anything. Okay. Uh, how about none of you mess with the NPCs you hate? Um, or keep safe, really. Or keep safe, really. Well, we've already seen one person fail at keeping their NPC safe. So, uh, yeah. Ouch. Uh, just just remember, right now, the Watchers are experimenting on him and torturing him. So <laughs> just, just remember that. Thanks. That's Thanks terrible. for the reminder. Did any- I've heard they like probing they do. orifices. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> Uh, did anybody sacrifice or risk something to reach your big dream? Nope. All right. No. So then that's your XP totals. In terms of changing rank, uh, none of you managed to dominate somebody who is a higher rank than you. Uh, you did a lot of, a lot of people did it lower than them, but no one, no one beat Insu. No one changes rank. And that's it. That's it. Nice. All right. So we're going to go ahead and end the stream for real now uh so if you're in the channel uh, thanks for hanging around and watching if you're watching this later uh on uh on vod or if you're watching on youtube or something uh thanks for for listening uh we'll hopefully be doing this again next week are we doing this, doing this again next week people, people? Okay, yeah sounds good okay so we'll, we'll we'll follow follow us on twitter uh at lolly guy or co for me you can see the announcements for when we're playing that kind of stuff uh, also, uh, look for adventures and lollygagging uh, wherever you get podcasts. We got another actual play that we do that we're uh, quite a few episodes in. Uh, it's pretty fun, uh, and that one's using Zweihander. It's more of a medieval uh, medieval setting. Uh, you can catch us on the lollygaggers.com. We got a bunch of different content uh, stuff up there as well, uh, including other podcasts and things like that that we do. Uh, and that's it. Um, thanks for hanging out, and uh, we will see you next week. Night, everybody. Night. Hi, everybody. Mm-hmm.